Good morning. Thank you, Lois. I got, oh, there's a Lois up there. I got my um, agenda. <laughs> She's feeling a little too happy. You know, that happens when I have just way too much coffee. <laughs> mm. I hope you can hear the music. No. Don't. No? No. Mm -mm. Oh. Oh, there's a flag. Okay, then I feel foolish because I'm dancing to the music that I can hear. <laughs> uh -huh, it's all in your head. No, <laughs> it's set. I wasn't, that's weird. I don't know why it's not working. <laughs> it's coming through my speakers. I haven't heard a thing yet. All right, let's try it this way. Good morning. We're just waiting on everyone. Uh, what about now, Drew? Yes. Morning. Waiting for everyone to get on. It's gone again, Lisa. Good morning. Morning. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. We're waiting on everyone to come in. Morning. Submitting people as they come in. Couple more minutes. Almost there. Good 
All right. Good morning, Hello. everyone. I'm still admitting people. Good morning. Good morning. Still have people coming on. I make sure all my state ladies are here. Everyone can see the screen so far? Yes. yes. All right, the waiting room seems to be empty. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I'll just admit people as they come in. Wow, so we have had a great three days uh, to start our week. We um, had our specific position training by your 2021 State Executive Governing Board leaders. Uh, that was very well attended. Thank you all for that. It was a wonderful three days. Uh, we covered every position and hopefully you gained more insight and education and inspiration on how to develop your positions and best utilize them in your local networks as we grow and press forward into 2021. So on behalf of your state board and myself, we welcome you this morning to our two-day 2020 Fall Leadership Summit. So welcome. So I personally wanted to thank you as well for your time today and for your time this week that you've spent with us and let you know that we really appreciate you all and that we at the state board are here for you. Um, the first thing I want to do this morning is introduce uh, everyone. So I'd like to introduce first the 2021 State Executive Governing Board for the Maryland State Network. So ladies, when I call your name, can you please wave to our leaders? And I will start, of course, with myself. I'm Lisa Chamberlain, your 2021 President for the Executive Governing Board. Uh, then we have Pearl Wetzel. Pearl, hi. Uh, she is our president-elect. Drew Yoakum. Hi, Drew. She is our first vice president. Vera Lawson. Hi, Vera. She is our treasurer. And then Jackie Bennett. Jackie is our state liaison this year, which is a new position we will talk about later. And then Sandra Hopkins, who is our immediate past president. Hi, Sandra. Thank you, ladies. <clears throat> now I'd like to recognize all of our local leaders. Um, I'm gonna call the name of your local network and the president's name. And then I would ask that you all that are in those networks, the officers that are here, wave to us so we know which network you serve, okay? So I'm gonna try and go back to my, and see everyone. Let's see everybody. Uh, Anna Rundle, Drew Yoakum. She is the president for Anna Rundle County. 
and everyone that is in her network. Can we see you guys all wave? <clears throat> Thank you. Frederick, Nicole, Aliyev, I, and her leaders. Thank you. Greater Baltimore, Anna Ferguson. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Anna, and her leaders. I'm here. Thank you. Greater Capital. Yay. Martha Liriano. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you so much Hi. for having us. Hi, and her leaders. Hi. Harford County, Diane Hessenauer. Hi, good morning, and her leaders. Howard County, Tina Hyatt. Hi, Tina, and her leaders. And then the seventh network, Prince George's. Hi, Cynthia, and her leaders. Cynthia McFarland. Great. Thank you, thank you all ladies. Okay, so moving forward, we have the pleasure of having a wonderful speaker this morning. It is my pleasure to introduce to you um, our guest speaker, Eileen Oldroyd, is the broker owner of Oldroyd Realty in Mission Viejo, California. She fills her soul tank by mentoring women in leadership with Women's Council of Realtors as the national liaison for the Eastern region. She is also affectionately known as Green Eileen because she specializes in sustainability, trying to get back to my resiliency and energy efficiency. Her knowledge and collaborations ultimately led to her being awarded the Elite Evergreen Award from the National Association of Realtors. Eileen is a CAR director, an NAR director, an appointed member of NAR's Green Advisory Board, and was the chair in 2020 of NAR's Sustainability Advisory Group. Green Eileen joy enjoys her free time with her secret husband, negotiating with two Boston Terriers, and discovering the next ultimate donut shop. So if you will, put your hands together and Help me welcome Eileen Oldroyd. Hey, thank Yay. you, Lisa. <laughs> thank you, that's so sweet. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, um, take it out of this. Uh, so, right. good morning, everyone. Good morning, Maryland. Good morning, Maryland. I have my. I have. I have to say that Maryland is probably the best state flag out of all the fifty states and American territories. I just love it. It's so colorful. Um, and uh, it just is, it just represents something very different than all the other states do. And you can recognize where the Maryland flag is immediately when you see all the long li line of flags. So thank you, Lisa, for inviting me here. She asked me to talk about uh, leadership and what it's like to start on this journey. And leadership is a journey. Sorry. It's not a title. It's not a title, but it's a journey of a lifetime. In fact, I'm slowly putting together a presentation called get on the leadership bus it's a it's a journey of a lifetime i don't know let me see if i could share my screen yeah i'm trying to get out of it so i'm sorry go ahead that's okay i think i could tell i think i can commandeer it um what's going on hold on a second actually i'm not ready to share my screen because i'm on the last slide on my presentation i need to get on the first slide of my presentation I don't want to give it away. Okay, so while I'm doing that, as you can imagine, if I'm still in, um, I'm still in California, and so I'm three hours behind you. Okay, and I closed the wrong presentation when I was closing my presentations today. So hold just one moment. Here we go. There we go. Before I share my screen. Okay, I'm back. There we go. All right. Hey. Thank you. 
Hey, there we go. Hey, all right. Now I'm feeling better. Okay. So uh, then I, I thought of this program, Women's Council Leadership Lab, because that's really what we are. We are an organization that builds leaders for the industry. And we're the, the nurturing arm. In fact, we even I call I, I call us the one percenters because even though we only represent less than one percent of the entire NAR leadership, we represent over twenty three percent of the leadership positions. So, NAR directors, committee positions. I'm a, I'm a, obviously I'm a product of Women's Council. I was just finishing my term as the chair of the Sustainability Advisory Group. Uh, next year, I will be part of the NAR Leadership Academy. In fact, Jennifer Vucetic and a few others were last year's Leadership Academy. We have Sherry Daniels and a few others from Women's Council that are the 2021 NAR Leadership Academy. So we are prevalent in the industry. This is what we do. But you got to do the work to get there. You have to find, it's kind of like, you know, I'm green. So I talk about a lot about nature. I do make food references because I'm very food motivated. Yes, I love donuts. I think about donuts every day. Um, and so we, we're like this rock tumbler where we take, uh, if you picture a stream, I love to hike. So if you picture a stream um, that has these beautiful rocks that you could see you know, you could see how beautiful they are, but when you take them out and they get dry, uh, you don't see that beautiful and uniqueness about them. You got to put them in the rock tumbler with a little bit of grit, roll it around a little bit. And when it comes out, it's, um, it's beautiful and it's unique and it shines like that continuously. That's really what Women's Council is, is that we take people, it's like boot camp. Uh, we give them the tools and the training and the education, the mentorship, a safe place to experiment and what comes out later is this beautiful, amazing leader that we could hand off to the community. It's in our mission statement that we build leaders for the industries and the communities we serve because not everybody stays with Women's Council. That's okay. We just want the credit for it. We just want to say, we did that. We did that. So yes, again, that's me. These are my two Bostons. That's Elmer and Boo. I do have a secret husband. Uh, however, during COVID, he really hasn't been that secret. <laughs> so he's been appearing in, in, um, uh, in the, off in the peanut gallery. Uh, he's been peer appearing on pictures and on Facebook uh, because you know we're spending so much time together. But I have enjoyed being home, I have to say. It's been wonderful. I'm an introvert. Who, I don't want to leave my house. In fact, I'm going to be one of those few that's going to, I, I have to work on my social skills when I get out of here. Uh, because I've just had such a blast being at home. It's hard to believe that somebody as talkative of me as me is considered an introvert, but it's true. I really am an introvert because I always say um, that funny and happy are two different things. You have to realize that. I One of the things that, uh, as you get to know me a little bit more, I have overcome depression and panic attacks uh, through my journey with Women's Council. And that's one thing that I say over and over again is that funny and happy, two different things. Uh, but I have to I have to thank Women's Council for my speaking talent, because once again, it was a safe place to learn, safe place to learn. So here is your state motto, Fati Maschi Parole Femine. I don't know if I pronounced that right. My mom's, my mom's Sicilian, she speaks fluent Italian. I'm sure she would correct me. But it, it interprets as manly deeds, womanly words. And of course, they have made that a little bit more politically correct over the years of the strong deeds, gentle words. I, I really, actually, I, I like it the way it is, manly deeds, womanly words, because if you think about, if you think about the world, if you think about Earth, uh, we need the sun and the moon. Um, we need the sun and the moon to have a balanced, a balanced world. And uh, leadership is kind of like that. You know, you need to do big, bold moves as a leader, but you also need to have very gentle, um, soft skills uh, in order to be a well-rounded, well-loved, well-respected leader. So I really appreciate your state motto that it is, um, it's a well-rounded, just four words, it's very well-rounded. So remember that as we go through, as we go through leadership, uh, that you do need to have both sets of skills you need to be courage, courageous, you need to be bold, you need to be innovative, 
but you also need to be compassionate, respectful, um, and empowering. We're gonna get back to that a little bit later about the difference between persuasive leadership and powerful leadership. I have a story that can hopefully um, bring that home to you. Uh, and so, uh, but it, it is a journey of a lifetime leadership but it's also an experiment in servant leadership. And what is that exactly? Um, so how many of you have been a member of Women's Council for less than a year? I can't see all of you, um, but I'm sure there's some of you that have been a member for less than a year. And some of you have been a member for maybe one or two years. And there's others that have been members for five, you know, six years. And this time, this time, whenever we look at women's council, it is kind of like, you know, you're starting your you're starting your position for the first time. That's what we do. We're kind of like one and over, one and done, one and moving on. You do it once and moving on. And those of us that have just finished your um, your position, you're like, I wish I could do it over again because I I'm, I've learned so much along. Now I'm moving on to something else, and it seems a little insurmountable. The other thing that it seems insurmountable is that. The, un the unknown of 2021, uh, we all went through this incredible year of unpredictability, navigating, pivoting, surprises, having these days where we just didn't want to get out of bed. And um, it's been tough. I mean, I can't sugarcoat that. It's been really, really hard. And we don't want 21, 2021 to be hard, but when, it, when you say less, yes to leadership, guess what? You got to do some hard work. You got to do some internal work. But that's what the beauty of it is that I don't, uh, I don't want you to be the same person this time next year. I want this time next year, I want you to be more seasoned, uh, more confident in yourself uh, and bring others with you on this journey. So even though it looks tough, Women's Council is the organization that'll get you through it with mentors, with training, with tools, with, uh, with your state leadership team. They're all here to support you in your journey as a local leader. That's their, that is what states do, is they support local leadership. So to lean on them, lean on them, because uh, my next slide is you, when you go, right before I start a new hike that I've never done before, uh, I will ask people that are finishing the trail, they're coming back to the trailhead, and I'll ask them, how was it? You know, how was the trail? Was it a big grade? Was there she trade? Were there trees? Were there, were there shade? Were there, were, you know, do I have to cross any big water, uh, rivers, creeks, that type of thing? And they're the ones that'll tell you what it was like before or what it was like. And that's what I like about Women's Council is that after we do, we serve these positions for a year, sometimes two years, we can ask you, what was it like? And you get that advice. Uh, and, and hopefully it's advice with love. And that's servant leadership. Servant leadership is not thinking about you alone on this leadership path. That you think about the membership, you think about the team, you think about what do I, am I the leader that other people want to follow? Am I the type of uh, leader that um, puts other people first? There's a great, a great speaker and author, Simon Sinek, and he has a book called Find Your Why. He has a, a few other books that really talk about uh, the concept of servant leadership, like leaders eat last. I've been enjoying watching him on YouTube, uh, just kind of like getting getting his vibe and what he talks about because servant leadership is just kind of something that's really hard to describe in, in one phrase. It's, it's really how you feel. And I was talking to another women's council member and I said, I don't get it. You know, I really don't get it about women's council. It's like, you have these women that on 10% male members, right? 10% male members, they, they are on a leadership journey too, that, they're so good at managing their business. They're managing their uh, their uh, homes. You know, they they get their kids to school, and they have their businesses and their um, their teams, their offices. But when they come to 
managing their women's council network, things fall apart a little bit. Like there's a little bit of drama. There's no lot of, lot, lot of communication. And she said, it's because they're really good at managing, great at managing, not so good at leading. Two different things, two different things. And that's why I want to talk to you about the concept of servant leadership. We only have about 10 more minutes together, but I do want to tell you a little bit about my, uh, my journey. I'm going to stop share for a moment here. So with, when I, when the reason I, a lot of you say yes to leadership is because you've seen it, how it's been done all this time. And, uh, and that's what I said yes to being state president of California. I said, this is the way it's always been done. This is how I've been preparing myself. And so this is the way I'm going to do it too. I am going to change the culture a little bit. I really wanted to bring home about the concept of servant leadership and how powerful it was. Uh, because I felt that I, I didn't, I didn't really uh, selfish reasons. I didn't want any more drama in my networks. Is that, uh, is that realistic? No, it's not realistic. However, if I can get them started to understanding persuasive leadership versus power, power leadership, being more empowering rather than overpowering, powering, uh, managing versus motivating. Don't those words sound different? Managing versus motivating. See what I'm going here? Uh, when, when COVID hit, the first thing I thought of was, what do I do? I, what do I do? And I had a wonderful mentor that, that talked me through it. And she's like, Eileen, it's never been done before. So you can't do it wrong. Well, that made me feel good. Like I can't do it wrong. Uh, then I thought about what is the opportunity for women's council during this? What is the opportunity? The opportunity is to get market share. Because we know that we're an organization that's very different than all the other organizations, but they don't know. You know, we're one percent of NAR membership, so ninety-nine percent of the membership don't know, doesn't know what an, an extraordinary organization we are, building leaders for the industry, changing people's lives. Because trust me, this organization trust changed my life, uh, and so I'm like, let's do it. Let's get some market share. Because that's the other thing that Simon Sinek talks about is that or even economists talk about that when there's a shift, when there's a trauma, when there's a crisis, that's where the, you know, the tough get going. Change your mindset, change your mindset that this is not a step back, but this is an opportunity. So to me, this was an opportunity to get more uh, information out there about the organization, to gain market share. And since all eyes were on me, state prezi, hello, Let's bring it home about servant leadership. And as we know, this has been an incredible opportunity to, to talk to the masses, to talk to many more people, touch many more lives. And so that's what we did. That's what we did. So this is your opportunity to think about what's out there. How can I change? How can I innovate? Because if it's never been done before, you can't do it wrong. So besides, you know, you got to follow the model. We know about the model that we have to follow. Absolutely. Because that is working on your leadership skills. Think about a frame of a home. You need to have the frame of a house before you put the drywall on, before you, um, before you put the flooring in and the carpet and all, this, all the sizzle. You have to have that framework. So you follow the state, you follow your, their network model. That's your framework. That's definitely, if you follow that like a roadmap, that's going to build your leadership skills but everything else is you developing you, right? Because when you have a house, you're ch you change the, what flooring do you want? What paint do you want? What furniture do you want? Uh, what cabinets and, and uh, countertops? That's all you, uniquely you. So let me go back to sharing again. Hold on. There we go. All right. So as you go through, because if I, for me talking about leadership, uh, I just finished a two day training course at NAR. It was called lead. It was, I think it was six hours a day for two days. And that still wasn't enough time. So our 20 minutes together, not enough time to go over, uh, to go over leadership, but I do want to go over the basics. Remember, you are developing you are developing yourself as a leader and you're developing others as a leader at the same time this is a collaborative effort 
And so one thing that we have found is that we need to communicate with one another on a consistent basis. When you don't communicate with one another, that's when chaos happens. So when you communicate, I love cheesy um, acronyms. I love it. Makes you help you remember things. I want you to care about one another because somebody, somebody on your team, uh, we're all, we're not meeting in person. I, you, know, you may be meeting in person, but a lot of us aren't. Uh, so it's very easy to make assumptions. It's very easy to uh, conjecture, do conjecture about what this other person's going through, but people are going through a tough time and you need to be graceful about that uh, because you never know we just never know what, uh, how they're feeling. So this is a collaborative organization. We need to collaborate with one another. We need to appreciate the job that they're doing. We're all volunteers, we're not getting paid. And we don't have currency here. Like we're not getting, um, we're not getting paid to do this. We're all volunteers. The currency we have is appreciation and recognition. So appreciate the job that they're doing, respect where they're coming from and encourage and develop more leaders. Remember that. Also remember that a rising tide lifts all boats. That when we celebrate each other, we celebrate each other's differences, we celebrate each other's successes, uh, that we're elevating ourselves. So a quick story about the difference between power leadership and persuasive leadership. I just attended an installation last night and the inspiration was about a woman that was in New Zealand and she rafted a river that's very famous and it's pristine. The first tour guide that she had was a, an American who was all about championing the, the rapids, overcoming the rapids, overcoming the river. They, it was all about competition and, um, and teamwork. And they had a glorious time going through the rapids and went at the very end, they're like, we beat the rapids, we beat you, we did such a great job, we overcame all these, up, you know, overcame the, the nature type thing. The second time she went back, she had such a wonderful time that she went back. The guide was, was a native Australian and he, is, he was very soft with his uh, explanation of the river. And he brought out, he didn't talk about overcoming the rapids. He talked about moving with the rapids. He pointed out different things in nature. He pointed out um, the how the history of this particular river, and that when they let when they ended, they just enjoyed the experience. They said it was just a more enriching experience, and they felt bonded not only with the tour guide but with the team as well. Two different experiences, same river. This is what leadership is is that what experience are you going to make for yourself? What experience are you gonna make for your team that makes it a very memorable, enjoyable experience? The, the thing is, is that you need to make it your own, that we want you to find the leader within that, that you are like blossoming. And uh, part of that is, of course, I gotta go bring, bring, bring back to communication, uh, that when you sit, when you communicate with your team, is it truthful? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Remember that. Remember that we're all doing this for the first time. We all want you to be better now than you were a year ago, but you need to do it together. And that's part of the leadership experience. So I like this. She had a gypsy soul, a warrior spirit. She made no apologies for her wild heart. She left normal and regular to explore the outskirts of magical and, and outskirts of magical and extraordinary. And she was glorious. That's all of you. That's all of you. Uh, I know uh, we had a, a somebody came up to me and they were talking to we were talking to the having a conversation with my president elect Rosanna Garcia and myself and they they looked at Rosanna on Zoom obviously and they looked at Rosanna and said oh you know you have got some big, big shoes to fill. I said, no, she doesn't. She has her own shoes to fill. She has her own leadership experience. This was my experience in 2020. She has her experience she needs to do in 2021. And that's true of all of you, is that it wasn't that you did a better job, you did your job. And that's what, you know, that's what you need to be thinking about is that when you have, when you're in the room and you're just kind of frustrated with whomever that's just not living up to what you've expected, have a conversation with them and say, you know, 
what's going on? How can I help you? How can I help you do your job? Once again, leaders eat last. So this is uh, Lisa's, this is Lisa's uh, signature that she has. New beginnings are just around the corner. And it's very true. They're everywhere. And in 2021, we don't, we're all waiting for this horrible time in history to be behind us, but it's also a land of opportunity to be the best you you could possibly be and tap somebody on the shoulder to help them be the best them they could possibly be. Leadership is not about titles. It's a journey of a lifetime. So enjoy the journey that you're on. Be better this time next year. And hopefully the person on your, all the people on your team will be better this time next year. And we could change the world together. So here, this is my information. If you want to take a screenshot, I'm really excited to be your, your, uh, your national liaison uh, that we're all in this together. And um, hopefully, you know, I'm here as a resource to you. I'm here for Jackie, absolutely here for Jackie, here for Lisa, and that uh, we can grow leaders together for the industry. So thank you so much, Lisa, for this wonderful opportunity. I hope that I hit all the points that you needed me to hit. And I'm really um, excited for the future of Maryland. You have a state, you had a national prezi come from Maryland, Anita Davis. So I'll leave it back, I'll give it back to you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much, Eileen. That was wonderful. Very encouraging and inspiring. We need to hear that. And thank you so much. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, next in line, we wanted to uh, appreciate another side of Women's Council, and that is our strategic partners. Um, so I'd like to um, give a welcome to all of our strategic partners that are here this morning by giving them just a couple of minutes to introduce themselves and to tell us who they are and what company they are with. And um, so I'd like to start with Peter Yanni with Freedom Mortgage. Peter, if you can unmute yourself and talk to us for a minute. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, Really happy to be following up behind um, Eileen with that very powerful and motivating speech. It's kind of hard to follow up. Um, I trust everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Yes. Okay. What, what, I, what, what I wanted to talk about um, briefly today is one, again, you know, myself, my whole team and the home team of Freedom Mortgage is very proud to be partnered with everybody on this call from the Women's Council. It's a great honor. The one mortgage caveat I'm gonna talk about is a good thing here, is I don't know if everybody has heard that starting in January, 2021, the loan limits are going to be increased. The conventional loan limit at this time is $510,400. It's gonna go up to 548 dollars 250. Um, what does that mean? It means you're going to have a lot of new buyers able to purchase, you know, at that higher price, but still receive the conventional pricing. Of, you know, like right now, pretty much all the paper I'm writing is in the twos, with, you know, the good credit scores and things like that. But it's going to create a lot of opportunity. And please do not forget that the home team of Freedom is partnered with the Maryland Mortgage Program. So we offer uh, DPA or down payment assistant loans. The only caveat to those is that's not a 30 day closing. It's more like a 45 to 60 with a well-engaged client. Um, you know, the main office, which I'm out of is in the Kentlands in Gaithersburg, Maryland. I am here to absolutely help anyone on this call with anything they need, even if it's just mortgage related questions please reach out to me. I am more than happy to help you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Peter. Okay, so our next strategic partner I would ask to speak is Russell Wimbro with Cutco. Can you hear me? Yes. Can I share my screen? Yes. We. <laughs> Y'all see that? Yes. All right. What I'll do for y'all, I already put y'all into a drawing to win a free knife for today because I like people who do like to take action. Since you guys are the guys that hopped on this call today, 
but not really going to talk about knives for a few minutes. I am going to talk about strategic appreciation and branding to help you guys get more repeat and referral business with no extra effort on your part. Anybody else that wants to make some more money in 2021 that's on here? <laughs> Sweet. Now, any good realtor lender knows business owner at the end of a transaction is the beginning of a lifetime relationship with your client. Everybody's got the chance to brand themselves, which goes by the wayside. Talking about closing gifts, not here today to tell you guys to give your clients as bad or anything like that. But what does happen to most of y'all's gifts when you give them? Anybody? Concern. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, they go in the closet. Yeah, they get stuck in a drawer. <laughs> Stuck in the drawer of the closet. Yeah, 95% of closing gifts are consumed. You've got baskets, gift cards, wine, dinner out, sweets, things like that. The other 5%, they go on a wall corner, get forgotten about. They collect what? Dust. Dust. You got door knockers, <laughs> doormats, pictures, plants, paintings. You got the more personal gifts. And then you got puppies. You know, everybody loves puppies, but you guys can't give puppies as closing gifts, okay? Just want to throw that out there. But what we believe in at our company is it's not your client's job to remember you. It's your responsibility and obligation to make sure they never have the opportunity to forget about you. And how we do that is we brand you forever. And when I say forever, who are, who are the people on here that give out Cutco now for closing gifts? Can y'all raise your hand? See, see these people that have their hands up? These are the sexy and intelligent people that are at this women's <laughs> today. All right. <laughs> We can always get some more hands up though now. For you guys that haven't heard of our stuff, it's like the Lamborghini or the Rolls Royce of the kitchen with a snap on tools guarantee. They're guaranteed forever they last, forever they're 100% American made. We've been making the K bar knives since World War II for the Marines. The shears were on the Discovery Channel, the knives are on the History Channel. They are the world's sharpest knives, and the handles have been on modern marbles. Now, since these are guaranteed forever and they last forever, we take them, we brand them with your info, with your name, with your phone number, some kind of logo, some kind of tagline. And then we put them in the most used room in the house, which is the kitchen, Kitchen, right? It's the center point of the home. It's where everybody comes together. We actually came out with the red handles for realtors. So it pops and draw attention when you guys aren't around. I actually had an instructor yesterday that had somebody call him from a baby shower and he got two referrals from a baby shower that closed from a red spatula spreader. Pretty cool. So this thing's sitting out. People are going to start talking about you. Hey, where'd you get that red handled spreader thing? Or where'd you get that pearl chopper knife? Oh, I got it from my realtor. Six months later, a year later, two years later. Hey, who is the realtor that gives out that pearl chopper, or that red handled spreader thing? You know, our daughter's in the market. We're looking to list our house. Boom, that's when you guys get a referral. And then how much are you all limited to per client per gift? $25. Yeah. $25. You're limited to $25 per client per gift. Since these are engraved, they're 100% tax deductible. Since they're considered promotional products or advertising, that way you guys can write off everything. You spend the money anyways. You might as well get the full tax write-off. And remember, it's the end of the year, too. You guys need more write-offs. And I'll go ahead and wrap up. Our gifts might not be the perfect gift for all your clients. Most of your clients do eat food every day. So our gifts will work for most of your clients. That's a joke too. <laughs> Knives and shears. The gifts range 60 to 250, which is what most of you spend. And then how we work, we get you supply gifts on hand for a year. Let's say you do 14 deals a year. You can order at the 14 level. Buy you two additional gifts. We ship them to you up front. We bill you out over six months to no interest. So it's really easy on your cash flow. You do 26 deals a year. You can order at the six level. We buy you five additional gifts. We still ship them to you up front. We still bill you out the same way. And then, like I always do, since I'm here for you guys today, for anybody that would like to place an order, I'll also throw in 150 bucks for two people on top of a bulk discount for me to you as well. And I'll throw in a free vegetable peeler for your house. So it's about $200 worth of free stuff for anyone that would like to place an order today. And no pun intended, 
for anyone that would, you can text SHARP to my cell phone number that's on the screen. And I am done, guys. I hope you all rock today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. I think several of us are going to be texting you. <laughs> Lisa, I'm sorry. Could we have his information one more time? Yeah, I'll put it in the chat box. Thank you. All right, great. And last but not least, we have one more strategic partner with us. Um, Donna Baker is with Cinch Home Services, uh, previously HMS, correct, Donna? And um, go ahead. Yes, and I also my uh, counterpart, the uh, account rep for the Baltimore area, she's on the call too, and that's Maureen Fleming. Oh, great, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so good to see you guys. Um, and I enjoyed uh, getting a chance to meet you personally at the installation dinner. So that was great. But I just wanted to remind you, you know, we are a strategic partner. Um, Cinch is now the company and it's uh, used to be HMS. And if you um, see our brochures, they are located in some of the offices and you can always go online to download one. And I'm also going to put our information um, in the chat box because we have a digital or a mobile business card, Maureen and I, so that you can download it with all of our information. Information. Um, I know since in the last six months or so since COVID hit, um, the home warranties are really becoming important to a client, you know, particularly a lot of appliances are failing um, because we're using them more. Um, there's people who are in their houses more, so we have a lot of HVAC issues. So, you know, it's an easy thing to kind of discount or to forget about um, for your clients, but it's really becoming important. Refrigerators, you know, they're running like $2,500 for replacements. So, you know, keep that in mind to share that with your clients that it's really important for, for them to add a home warranty. Uh, and also, you know, why cinch we really have great comprehensive coverage we uh, don't have limits on dollar limits on appliances we cover refrigerant uh, we don't have limits on hvac replacements so it's a very rich warranty plan and as always being a partner with uh, women's council maureen and i are always here to advocate for you assist in any way so um it makes it makes a big difference if you know who your you know warranty rep is um and you know, we're here to help you guys in any way. So um, please keep us in mind. And we're going to put our information in the chat box. And I have something fun for you ladies. Um, I have one gift card, $50 gift card to uh, Marshall's TJ Maxx Home Goods. Um, so what I'm going to do is just a fun trivia question. So whoever answers it correctly in the chat box, uh, I will send you the gift card. And, um, and Maureen, oh, I'm sorry, Maureen, I forgot to, I'm going to let Maureen talk too as well. Um, but my question is, and it's a trivia question, is what Fleetwood Mac song has had a resurgence due to a TikTok video? So um, does anybody know that answer? It's been, it's kind of brought me back to it. Um, so anybody know? Mm -mm. Answers. Hmm? What's the question again, Donna? I said, no, what, was, yeah. what was the Fleetwood Mac song, song that's had a resurgence due to a uh, viral TikTok video? Um, <laughs> Have you seen him and he's singing the words? Nope. Yeah, so he, Tina Hyatt said dreams. Yes, that's it. All right, Tina. Yeah. Congratulations. I'll get this in the mail to you. Okay. And I'm um, going to Maureen put her mobile business card. Maureen, do you want to say hello? Yes, there she is. We can't hear you, Maureen. Hi, this I'm Maureen Fleming. Um, I know some of you guys that are in the Baltimore, Delaware areas. So, um, you know, just hello. I'm glad you're all doing well and staying safe during coronavirus. We are up and running and we're fixing things. Um, we have a great policy. Donna and I have been around for a few years. So if you need anything, let us know. Thanks. I have a question. Thank you, Maureen. Sure. Lisa, I have a question. Yes, go ahead, Arellis. Okay. Uh, good morning, ladies. So I just have a quick question. Does uh, Cinch have the uh, PDF and um, for the brochure in Spanish? We don't know. That, that's a good question. Yeah. We, you know what? We have a flyer. We, we do have one uh, flyer or two that we have in Spanish, but we don't have the full brochure. 
Okay. And uh, Jennifer Stevens is my account rep. For yep. Okay. Thank you. Are you in Frederick? You're in Frederick or Montgomery? Montgomery. Yeah. Yep. That's Jennifer. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you can reach out to her, Aurelis? I already have. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank there's, you. There's, there's actually four. four. There's actually four of us that cover um, Maryland. So, you know, it just tells you like what a, you know, vast network we have here um, in, in the state. So four reps, a lot of the other, our competitors only have one that covers the state of Maryland. So. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Thank you, Donna and Maureen for being here today. Really appreciate you guys. We appreciate all of you, Peter and, <clears throat> excuse me, Russell and Donna and Maureen, thank you so much again for being our support structure and strategic partners with us. Sure. Thank you. Our pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, we're gonna go to break in just a little, a little bit, a couple minutes, but I wanted to, we um, had a couple of announcements. Pearl, are you where, with us? You're muted, Pearl. Can you unmute yourself? Yes. Okay, so Pearl Wetzel is our 2021 president-elect, and she's going to go over some important announcements for us this morning. And then we're going to take like a five-minute break. Um, you guys can just mute yourselves and stop your video at break time. We're going to stay on this same link all day, so um, it'll give you a chance to get up and you know go get a cup of coffee or whatever you need to do. Um, but as soon as we're done with the announcements, you can uh, take your leave and go take a break, and we'll be back on at 11 o'clock. Okay, go ahead, Pearl. Okay, so just for the very first announcement, um, we can all go get a cup of coffee except for Drew. She already let us know she's uh, overloaded on coffee already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So good morning, everyone. I'm Pearl Wetzel and I am the uh, 2021 president-elect for the state of Maryland. Um, and I am here with some announcements. Um, in your email, um, each of you should have received the 2021 calendar of events. You should peruse this to acquaint yourself for the upcoming year. Today, I will highlight a few items that need focus right now. Oh, one second. Oh. Number one, for those of us who are not able to attend any or all of the sessions at the national conference this year, uh, WCR has a YouTube page. If you subscribe, you will be able to access all of the sessions for free. Number two, you will hear more from our president, Lisa Chamberlain. However, I want you to start wrapping your brains around the fact that there are reports that are to be submitted by local network presidents. Number three, the brand new national virtual event uh, is upcoming. It's called Wonderfest. And it's being held on December the 17th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. So that's actually 12 to 5 Eastern. And it is a virtual holiday gathering. It's a day long event full of laughter, fun, and good old holiday fun. Um, <laughs> the information to register can be found at wcr.org, and the fee to attend is $35. Uh, number four, microsite admin certification training class. The date is December the 8th and it is required. This is a national sponsored class and should be attended by the president and president elect. The time is two o'clock central or three o'clock Eastern standard. Now, per national, our local microsite has pre-populated information including officers, local bylaws and logos. As an admin, you have the ability to post events, include a president's message, house key documents, and download member rosters for real time for your renewal efforts and marketing campaigns. This session will provide you all the tools you need to become an admin on the site. New this year, only attendees who successfully attend and complete the training will be granted microsite admin access effective 2021. The link to register is located in the most recent roadmap email received originally on November the 23rd. 
And remember, this is a requirement, okay? Now, turning your attention to the calendar, um, number five, the executive board and governing board meetings. These will be held every other month. The first one will be on January the 12th by Zoom. The executive board is from nine to 11. Um, wait a minute. Oh, and the governing board is from 11.15 to one. Did I get that right, Lisa? Did I mix it up? Okay, executive board meeting is, uh, yeah, from, uh, from nine to 11 and the executive board is, a governing board is from 11.15 to one o'clock. Um, and if you look at the bottom of the calendar, um, you can actually see them uh, posted there. Okay, now we have a human trafficking event that's coming up. The date is January the 27th from 9.30 to 12.30. It will be via Zoom. The event is free. However, you will need to register. And uh, as you know, human trafficking is at an all time high in Maryland. And so therefore, um, realtors and other industry professionals such as home inspectors, plumbers, electricians, uh, as well as social service providers will identify the signs on human trafficking and how you can respond if you suspect human trafficking is occurring in your community. Um, we do have um, some prominent speakers. And so we just want you to mark your calendar to, pre to, be, pre pre to be prepared for that. Uh, number seven. National has announced an Elevate Growth Seminar for February the 4th and 5th. This is another new conference. It's being held virtually. Again, uh, the information for registration can be found on wcr.org. Who should attend? All local and state network leadership teams. Anyone seeking to elevate their business leadership and growth in 2021 there will be a registration fee with discounts. So don't hesitate to investigate. Uh, last highlights, um, located on roadmap is an announcement to join Network 360 year round 2021 leaders group on Facebook. This is a year round leaders group where local and state network leaders can share best practices, seek advice and answers from peers plus gain insights and news to enhance their Women's Council Network's value and grow their own professionalism. Number nine, anyone should, I mean, everyone should have received a copy of the 2021 calendar. Please review your calendar. Uh, no network events should be scheduled on governing board dates. Again, no network events should be scheduled on governing board dates. And finally, all presidents are required to attend governing board meetings. President elects are always encouraged to attend. If you cannot attend, a designated person should be sent in your place. However, they aren't to just attend because they are not just a placeholder. They are responsible to provide a report of what was discussed. And that is the end of my announcements. I appreciate your attention. I hope you made note of everything. And if you have some questions, you can certainly go to wcr.org um, and also check our calendar. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Pearl. Thank you. Ooh, that was a lot. Yeah, so if um, I will send out the calendar again in tomorrow's um, daily morning email. So those of you that don't have it will have it. Um, you should have been getting it in your position training this week but um, I will make sure that each of you have it. Okay, so now we are gonna go ahead and take our five minute break. Um, so like I said, you can just mute yourselves and stop your video, stay on. And when we come back, um, myself and Jackie Bennett, our state liaison is going to start our next meeting. Thanks guys.
Hey, welcome back, everyone. I, do we have everybody back? Hopefully, we have everyone back. Um, this next session, we are going to go into the um, the state network. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the principles and practices. As you guys know, just wait a second and see. I got people coming back on. Um, Okay. All right. So if you can turn your video back on and just mute yourselves, um, that would be great. And we will get started again. I'm going to share my screen again. And we are going to talk about the state network and go over a few uh, principles and practices. So in 2016, as you can see, the network model was approved and then uh, 2018, all the networks were fully compliant. That was the big change that I went through as president in Greater Baltimore. Um, and I was the first president with the new uh, local network model. Now we have, and we are coming into 2021, and now National has rolled out a new state model. So uh, we're not going to go into detail about what the state is required to do, but what I wanted to do is touch on. Uh, a few things with the state network and what our main role is for you, uh, our local networks. So Jackie Bennett and I um, are gonna co-tandem teach this, hopefully for you. <laughs> are you there, Jackie? Jackie, are you there? Let me make sure she's not. I was muted, I'm here. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we're going to go back and forth, uh, and she is going to um, interject when she needs to as far as what we're talking about. So our main focus with the state, our main focus is um, to support you, to support you and your local networks and the success of your local networks. Um, this year, we... Um, we have a new state liaison position. It used to be the governor position. Jackie's gonna talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but I first wanted to just talk about some common sense principles and tips on how we carry out our role for you. Without you guys, we would not exist. Um, we have to have at least, you know, there's a minimum amount of state, um, sorry, local networks required to have a state network. And we do have a state network here in Maryland and we are here for you. Um, so basically, what is it about? Well, it's about trust. Um, we take steps to help you proactively build a positive relationship between the state and the local. Um, we are really focused on this this year because we want to make sure you guys are um, ha handling your situations and your locals. We wanna make sure you have a solid foundation um, so we can help move you forward. Um, but, you know, we understand that trust isn't given out lightly. Trust has to be earned. And we um, are here this year to earn that trust from you. Let me stop sharing for a minute so I can see you all. So the first thing I want to talk about is clarity and consistency. Uh, we have to have an effective orientation um, with you with a focus on your role and responsibilities. That's why we took the time this week to go into each position specifically and put you in a form where you felt comfortable to speak, to get to know each other. Um, to be able to share and collaborate ideas and open that channel of communication so you feel more comfortable in your position. Um, as Eileen said, we are in these positions for one year and um, I want that year for you to be a good experience, not something that you always feel you're behind the eight ball. So one of the intentions that I had by doing the 
position specific training was that you guys could meet the other ladies in the state that are in the same position as you are um, in that leadership position and you know gather ideas together help each other share with each other collaborate with each other and that way we don't have to reinvent the wheel you know we can um actually i when i was speaking with eileen uh california was such an inspiration for me in these last six months and what they've done as far as pivoting and you know moving forward with this whole COVID environment i asked her you know if we could utilize some of her thoughts and processes that they're doing in California because, you know, like she said, this is a volunteer position. We don't have time to create brand new things. If we can share and collaborate with others from other networks, um, it, it helps us do our job. So the speakers you'll see today and tomorrow are all from California and from our local board. Um, and the reason that we did that was because we wanted to bring you guys some out of the box thinking, you know, um, give you encouragement and inspiration from other people that are doing things uh, that might inspire you to do something as well and maybe take it to a different level, you know, but it um, hopefully will help you. Uh, consistency is the other piece to that and uh, procedures and protocols should be clear and consistent. And that's one of my goals with uh, me and the board this year, um, your state board is to create more consistency and put the processes in place to help support you guys. And, you know, that's gonna help you move forward when you don't have to think about the basic uh, procedures, you can move forward with clarity, knowing that uh, the procedures are already in place, the processes are in place, you just have to follow it. Like Eileen said, you just follow what's already there, and then you're able to be creative and build on that. Um, Jackie, is there something you wanted to say on that with the clarity and consistency? No, not, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so then we go to communication, um, and we know open, honest, regular communication not only provides the best opportunity to identify an issue early, but it lays the foundation for trust and working together. Uh, it, establish, it, it establishes a comfort level with each other and a history of positive interaction, and it will go a long way in the ability for us as state leaders to serve you, and then also to help intervene uh, productively if there are issues in your network to resolve. So communication is key. Um, Jackie, you wanna talk there? Yes, I do. Good morning, everybody. Um, so what we learned in 2019 and in 2020 is that local, some local networks uh, we're having issues that state knew nothing about. And the, the problem just became bigger and a bit out of control. And by the time state was brought in, it, it was just a larger issue than, than what it had to be. So you're not alone. Um, I know that uh, one of the network that we had to help solve a problem with um, had a major issue that had not been communicated. And it was months later before we were, and it's something that we really could have just solved within a week. So it, it is imperative that we are kept in the loop. We're, we're here to be useful in that kind of way to help you roll through whatever the issues are. Uh, we just, we just want to be able to help between our board and your board, which there isn't an issue that we should not be able to solve um, for our local networks. We know that um, the Maryland State Network is as strong as its weakest network. And so a strong local network means everything to the overall Maryland State Network. So we're here to help. And that's the difference I know that we discuss specifically in our, in our strategic meeting a couple weeks ago, that that is something we, we want that open line of communication and we want to be able to add value to our local network this year moving forward. So please let us know. 
Yeah, I mean, we could stop there for a minute. Does anybody want to share anything? Um, any concern that they might have right now or in the past that they came through and could be an encouragement to someone? Anybody want to share? I'm happy to let you speak. Okay. All right, no problem. So hey, we um, this is Sheila. Oh yeah, hi Sheila. Hi, I couldn't get off mute uh, quick enough. I okay. just wanted to say that in my network, Baltimore, coming in with no experience as a um, WCR president, I definitely leaned on you guys, and you were great help for me. And I, I just wish that we'd had something like this earlier, like if we had something like this for the new presidents coming in, this is very valuable information because I learned so much um, in the midst of it if, that I, if I had known earlier, we could have had a smoother transit action, I, I do believe. Absolutely. So thank you guys for uh, putting this together. Thank you, Sheila. Hey, uh, Lisa, this is Drew. Yeah, go ahead. I'm operating off of two uh, instruments, but um, I wanted to share with the group. Um, so I always operate on 10. And so uh, there have been so many times this year during COVID and last year prior that I relied on the network with Jackie and uh, Lisa and Sandra, and they have not only been there for our network and offered some very professional, very um, confident, uh, you know, resources for us that we can maneuver through it. But even doing COVID, I mean, I relied on them a lot and you guys have always been there. You've talked me off the wall and stuff. Thank you very much. So anyone who's thinking that, hey, I can do this all by myself. It's just, it's just always great to have another ear and they are there really for us to help you guys and help your network. So thanks very much. I'm looking forward to working with you guys again this year. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Drew. Anyone else want to share something before we move on? Okay. Um, so the next point that I wanted to make was just in, in um, light of the communication, tool is a collaborative approach. Um, just make sure that you're, as leaders, your collaboration uh, message should be clear, not only to your board members, but your uh, membership. That, you know, no, no, despise the, despite the challenges, sorry, if I can get it out of my, my mouth, despite the challenges that will arise, because we know that no network is perfect and we will have challenges during the year. Um, there should be no doubt from your point of view as a local leader that we at state want you to succeed, number one. We want you to succeed. We believe in you. We believe that the local leaders are always acting with good intentions for the Women's Council. You know, we are a national organization. It is not a club based in Maryland. So we have um, responsibilities to that end as well, acting with good intentions, not only at our local or state level, but for our national level. And then believe that leadership in Women's Council is an opportunity for personal and professional development. That's another thing that should be understood with people um, when you are out in your communities and your industries that, you know, that we are constantly um, sharing that light with others that Women's Council is a leadership opportunity. Um, and then understand that we're in a learning environment. We are, like Eileen said, a laboratory to practice and grow leaders and that's, and their skills. And that's what we do. We create them in our lab and then send them on to MR, NAR, you know, NAREB, all the associations. That's what we do. This is where a lot of people at NAR got their start. So just remember that the collaborative piece is very important. Um, and then the big picture, just keep in mind that um, as local leaders, you are instruments to serve, like I said, a bigger purpose. 
And that is conveyed in our mission that we are empowering leaders in the industry and the communities that we serve. Um, and we want to advance you guys and we want to advance your success as business leaders. That's, you know, that's what it's all about. Um, so Jackie, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I include you. Yeah. I, I just wanted to add in that we ought to also be reminded that the Women's Council National is a, it's an, it's a body that is over 80 years old. So it, it, it's a sustainable body. Um, many of persons um, that I've ran into at national conferences has been a part of this body for 30, 40, 20, you know, longstanding years. So, um, you know, business people, professional people here, obviously this is, this is a place where um, something is to be had, can be gotten from, right? This is where people come and anchor themselves professionally and, and personally as well for development. And, and so um, um, my thought is that, yes, perhaps the, we have not seen a pandemic before on this level, but certainly there, they must have also endured some challenges, network challenges, state network challenges, membership, drop in membership, depending on what's going on in the world market. And so they have overcome, they've been around 80 years. And so I think we will, as a Maryland State Network, will and should expect to rebuild and overcome as well, because, um, you know, it has been done before. That's not something we have to reinvent, right? Um, we have had, national has had a paradigm shift, everyone is already aware of. Um, this is what has brought along some new roles, like the state liaison, national liaison role. Um, Lisa, should I go ahead and talk about that now then? Yeah, I was going to say, you can go ahead and talk about that piece. Yeah, and so my, it's a new role, right? So I'm, at this point, I'm not an authority on, and on, on, this, on the role itself. Um, Eileen sent an email a couple of days ago that says, this is new. So, you know, there's a learning curve for herself and for all the state liaison throughout the country. So, um, but my sense is the idea behind the role is for national to now have a get and manage a hand, get and have a handle on what takes place at the local networks, right? Because there's a lot of stuff that goes on in these local networks. Um, we know, a local leader will tell you, we have people that are repeating roles, serving, um, uh, double roles, uh, two years as president, they're wearing multiple hats, um, getting persons to um, fill these position and support. Uh, we have long-term members um, that are saying, look, where's the value? What is my value? How, you know, what do I get out of this? And, and so our challenge at a state and local level is to, um, first of all, um, deliver that value to our current membership base and deliver a rich enough content of information that it attract new members. So um, I, think, I think it's useful. I think this is going to be extremely useful for our networks to have that open line to national for them to be aware of what's going on on the ground level and to see what kind of um, contribution and input they're intending to make um, as this serves this new paradigm that, that they have in mind for the National Council moving forward. So um, I'm eager to hear about it. Um, I know that um, for uh, there is a good piece of the role description that really covers what the governor was doing before, mm -hmm. um, where we still liaison with local networks. If there's an issue or conflict, we're there to um, manage, help support, um, reach outside for additional support. I know we had to do that last year around that insurance issue we had. And, you know, so um, we're anchored by national, we're anchored by the National Association of Realtors. And I think that what we need to be reminded of that this is a body where we anchor ourselves personally and professionally. And also 
It is a body where we get business referrals. And to the extent that we make that piece of it work for each and every one of us and for all of us makes all the difference in the world. Even here in Maryland, I mean, I had to reach out to Frederick to ask Mary for some help on a property that I was showing up there that I had no clue what was going on. I reached out to Drew many a times. So we wanna use our network, we wanna build it. If it's strong, it's strong for all of us. And if it's weak, it's weak for all of us. And so the work is um, ahead of us to um, make this um, beneficial. This team, this 2021 team, all of us, um, is in it to make this a useful um, value and bring value added um, to our current members and our potential members. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, does anybody have, so you understand that we did have uh, in our structure um, before this year, a governor, and then we had a regional vice president. And so now that's gone away. And what we have is a state liaison, which Jackie is holding that position. And her entire role is to support the local networks. So she will be taking part of that um, job description of a governor, but they've also added some things uh, as well to her job description. So as she said, uh, not only is she there to support you guys uh, specifically, but our state board as well. And so the next question is, is how do we do that? Well, this year we're putting into place at the executive board level, uh, more communication. We want to keep those lines open with you guys. We want to know mm -hmm your you know your hurts your fears your successes we want to know what's going on that's why we're trying to make it really important for you to be at these uh, governing board meetings so we can all stay on the same page this year another piece would be for us as state board members um, we want to be able to visit your locals you know vera is in anne arundel i'm in howard jackie is in uh, greater capital for instance um, Pearl is in Prince George's. We want to be able to come and visit sister networks so we can help facilitate your process of, you know, encouraging people that are coming to your meetings and lifting them up and inspiring them and letting them know, like Jackie said, that we are a body. We are, we are realtors. We are women's council. And we want to be able to project that to others. So we do that by actually committing ourselves to you guys this year to be able to come to your, not only your governing board meetings, but your network events. Uh, we're gonna make an effort uh, on the state level to visit our locals this year. So that's another piece that we are going to uh, put into place other than just helping and supporting you in your you know, day to day uh, operations and activities that you have going on in your network. But just know that, like I um, said, and like Jackie said, we are here to help you and we are only as strong as our weakest network. So if you need more help than um, someone else, please just call us, um, we are here. Um, conflicts do arise, that was my other piece. And you know, like Jackie said, if we're aware of it, we can help. Um, what we don't want to see is something festering and then all of a sudden the president and the board has been overwhelmed and have nowhere to turn and then we've got a big problem on our hands. So we just want you to know that we are here to help you guys this year and um, we want to make it a learning experience and we value each of you personally and professionally in your journey as a leader and we want to be here alongside that. Uh, journey to help you. Um, I would just remind you that, like I said before, we already have things in place at National to help us. If you are on the website on WCR.org, there is a plethora of information that you can find and fine tune to use uh, at your meetings, at your events, um, all kinds of graphics, um, you know, we're going to talk about Canva later today, but, you know, for instance, Canva, that platform, it already has things set in it where it gives you the colors and the 
you know, the font, everything. So there's a lot that's already there. If you guys will delve in, uh, maybe you already have. I'm just opening up the opportunity for you to go and visit WCR.org on your local level after you log in and see all the information that's available to us because uh, there's no reason for any of you not to be able to succeed this year. Jackie, did you want to add anything to that? Well, I think part of what Eileen has already sent a, a, a request for a report out, um, trying to get an assessment of the state of a fair beach network. Um, how many networks has uh, positions that are unfilled, their sizes, um, you know, um, persons that are interested in additional leadership beyond their local network, that type of information they're, they're already now trying to gather. And so my guess is that they probably will be, they will continue to gather more of that information as we move forward, as I said, brand new role. So um, the 2021 year just began. So that type of thing they're zeroing on to, um, um, you know, to see how they, they could contribute or help shape or inform as to how we move forward and membership, right? So this membership issue is a real tangible issue. Um, National has experienced it, our local networks and not, it's not unique to only the council, right? We have CRS also is having the same issues. So these issues are, across the board. And so um, everybody has got to put their heads together um, to come up with solutions, right? So um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad that they are um, operating within this scope in terms of really focusing on how we help our networks, state, local networks. And so um, it's going to be, it's a, it's, a, it's a resource that is going to be as useful as we make it. So let's, let's use it. Um, send an email, send a text. I think the other thing that I'm noticing also um, is that they really want us to rely on using uh, smaller committees to help with the work. It's volunteer work, right? So no one wants to spend eight hours a day doing stuff. So we use committees, um, get someone, get a project team, you know, hey, can you handle that? Get two or three people on that. Um, for state network, they're requiring some mandatory committees. Mm -hmm. uh, another benefit to using committees is that you get other persons involved and role and responsibility. Maybe someone is not interested in doing a full commitment for a year, but if you give them a small job to do, it's it's their way of staying involved, contributing, right? And maybe become interested in some doing something more. So utilize folks, keep, get everybody involved, get your membership involved on whatever scale. It will help you as a president with your scope of responsibilities and give persons opportunities to be involved in the, in the network. Um, and again, just reach out, let us know, let me know what we can do. Um, feel free to invite us to your meetings as Lisa indicated, um, but also when you do your planning, we talked program director yesterday, but when you do your planning, um, I know Howard has already planned for the year, that's phenomenal, and a couple others. Um, but let us know what you're doing so we could uh, be a resource to um, be part of that, that invitee body in, into your networks. Publish, publish, publish. Use us, let us know how we could help expand you. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, no, that's good, Jackie. And that's one of the things that we covered in the president's meeting this week was um, those microsites. It's really important um, to be able to have everything up there on those microsites. So not only your network can see it, uh, but then the other networks in the state see it. And then it also is seen nationally, um, as you know. So um, keeping those uh, microsites updated uh, is critical for us to be able to stay connected and, um, you know, we can see what each other is doing. And sometimes, like I said, ideas spawn off of other people's ideas. So 
Um, that's great. So at this point, I, you know, we've been talking about what we want to do with you. I'd like to hear from you guys what you would like to see us do for you and what deficiencies have maybe you seen in the past that we can work on this year to create a better state uh, network for you moving forward. So if anyone wants to uh, speak, unmute yourselves and just tell me who you are. Hi there, Hi there. I'm Martha. Hi Martha. If you can hear me well. Yes. Great. Um, I, I had a question uh, going back to something that Jackie mentioned. Um, uh, Greater Capital Board, we ought to also have our a year already planned and uh, everything set. Uh, a question that I have that I, it seems like uh, one of our, our board leaders keeps bringing up, but uh, we really haven't done much because at least uh, when I was pretty much just a member, not on the board, and even after sitting on the board, because I did sit on the board, you know, uh, a couple years before officially taking uh, this leadership role, um, uh, was the, the, the idea of every single time moving forward that the board, our board, uh, gathers or has meetings that we need to invite our members. Um, and so that's been a confusion because again, and, and when I was a member as well as, you know, before taking on presidency roles, that was never done nor was it mandated to do. But because of the fact that we, you know, we're experiencing so many changes, I wasn't sure if that is now sort of a, a mandatory thing for me to take lead on and making sure that we're always providing to our members the opportunity to attend our board meetings or is there a minimum that we're supposed to sort of open the dot you know open the uh invitation for them to come in and sort of sit in the in in the background while they while they hear the board um converse and, and discuss our plans uh for upcoming events can you touch on that subject please yeah, yeah. go ahead jackie i'm yeah, sorry they, that has never changed as far as i'm aware um, members are welcome to attend the executive board meeting. They don't oh, have a voting role. They, they're not allowed to vote, um, but they're certainly able to attend to hear what's going on and see what's going on with their networks. So can you help me understand the process? So traditionally when a, an agenda is created, then it's posted on our, on our network's website is there a special invitation that needs to be sent out or by us publicizing the agenda and when the meeting is going to happen, then whoever wants to attend can do it that way. Can you help me understand that part? Because again, yes. at my year, I never saw it. Your that. meeting, you could publish when you're, when you're scheduling an executive board meeting. Mm -hmm. And then if you want, you could even add a registration element to it so you know who's coming. And then just share the agenda with those persons that will be attending, right? So right. your agenda doesn't just have to be, you know, um, public in that, but you avail the meeting dates to the general body, have them register to attend, and, and, and send your agenda to your attendees. Got it. All right. Um, and then uh, now going into the, what um, Lisa mentioned, um, you know, I think that you guys certainly have been doing everything great for me on my end. I, I certainly agree with uh, those ladies that have spoken out about the great things that you guys have been doing for us. Uh, but me personally, if there was anything else that I can add, I would add more so for just overall support. Um, I know that you guys are, you know, uh, oftentimes always, you know, reiterating some of the emails and, and notes and, 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 and sort of, uh, you know, uh, events that's being brought down from national, but uh, sometimes I feel as if all I'm receiving is, hey, we need this, we need this, we need that, but in return, I never feel like I also got the other support. Now, granted, the support that if I have a question or something's needed, I know that I have that because it's certainly been, you know, I've certainly used that option and you guys have always been there, but I mean, I don't know. I just feel like all the way around, I just feel it would be great to get more support, uh, not only from state, but also our sister networks, because I feel like more that we're able to, you know, portray that support is what is going to bring more of the unity that that everyone is portraying, and perhaps that can uh, perhaps help with our membership volume and and overall everyone within the state of Maryland can see just how united we are, as opposed to it just feels uh, at least in, you know in the past immediate three years that everyone is sort of just in their own world, and then we when we come together we're able to sort of release and and reflect on what 
what we've done, but it hasn't been uh, united throughout the year. So, okay, so that's say, the only thing that I would support, like to do. Martha, when you say support, can you be a bit more specific? What type of support you're talking about? I mean, you mentioned some support, but that you're missing a particular kind of support. So what are you referring to? Yeah, what, what are you looking for, in other words? Uh, uh, per perhaps more friendly reminders. Uh, I, I clearly we all know, uh, you know, that every single month certain reports are due. Um, but perhaps friendly reminders are at least two weeks prior to the due date, as opposed to the due date passing. And then it's like we feel in that extra pressure. You didn't turn it in. What's going on? That type of uh, sort of response. Um, so I guess just a friendly reminders with weeks ahead before something's actually due, um, just because there's so much going on around all of, all around that sometimes that added pressure sometimes doesn't really help that much as much. Okay, that's. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'll make a note of that, Martha, and that's definitely um, something that we can do. Thank you. I just wanted to make a comment. Thank you. Can I just make a quick comment? Um, sure. You talk about uh, your membership coming to your, your board meetings. Um, in Prince George's, we've always uh, opened it and made it made our members welcome to attend our meetings. And what we would do is whenever we would have um, our, our monthly meeting, we would make sure that we indicated that in the program and we would read it, but then we would put it in the program so that they would know when they were being held and so that they would know that they are actually welcome. They, they could read that they're welcome uh, to be there. And then uh, on the side of of the networks coming together, um, I, I personally think that um, Cynthia Marshall McFarland and Drew Yoakum have done a superb job this year uh, during this time of COVID of coming together and, and showing the network and the members um, just how cohesive uh, we are because they have done so many uh, of their activities um, together this year. So. Um, you know, I, I really think that they're to be commended for that because I think that uh, in this time of COVID, it shows that you really do need to stand together. And um, I, I think that they've done an excellent job with that this year. So, you know, I think that more networks need to come together and, um, you know, put, to get, put together some activities that will expand our, our scope because, you know, when you only have one or two people as opposed to, you know, combining and now you've got maybe 20 or 25 people, whereas, you know, it just makes it look a lot, a lot better to the public. Thank you, Pearl. And uh, Lisa, can I say something too? Yeah. Uh, Martha, I think, you know, we, we hear you and I, Lisa has made a note, but I know that part of the challenge that we had last year is that even when notices are sent, some people don't open their emails timely. And so one of the things that we discussed at the strategic planning was to explore employing another strategy of communication. For example, maybe a group text or a text blast or something to that effect to get information more immediate to our leaders. So I know that we're looking at that to see um, if that would make a difference in terms of um, delivering information and getting responses timely as well. So perhaps that is um, something that could be useful moving forward. Yeah, we are looking at uh, another vehicle. I love that option. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Lisa. I was just going to say I love that option simply, simply because, you know, us in our profession, we get masses of emails throughout the day. So right. getting those texts will certainly, you know, uh, make, make a difference. difference, right? That even if it's that friendly two week in advance, hey, don't forget your board in that right there. That will certainly help me on my end. Um, but thank you so much for that. Great. And if I may, I would like to just piggyback on what Pearl has said. Even though my uh, network did not do any Thing together with the other networks, I really did feel the support of the other networks, such as Drew and Cynthia. And, you know, we talked a lot of times and were able to um, brainstorm on different things. So I think that from what I experienced as a member and a um, president elect, this year, I felt that our 
network did connect more with the state than I had known us to do before. So I just can't say how much I appreciate you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. That's great. Thank you. And that's what we're trying to foster is this community um, yes. of, yeah. Yeah, to now yeah. our members know that it's not just like you said, it's not just a local club or a state club, but it's national. And we have learned so much putting ourselves out there to um, be involved. We have to be involved. Yeah. Can I put a challenge out there? Who sure, go ahead, Jackie. How many networks is it? Seven. 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 So can we be more purposeful and intentional with making sure that each month, or not each month, but maybe two months, each network get one or two of their members to attend another meeting? So maybe Prince George's, we may say, we'll make sure we have at least four members at Anne Arundel's meeting. And then maybe Anne Arundel will say in March, they'll have some of their members in Hartford's meeting so that we can become more. Because we all want someone to reach out, but you do, you have to reach out to first get someone to reach back out to you. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Or maybe we can just kind of start that circle. I know we send the flyers out and say, such and such is having this event. And we all see it. We all have our calendars. You may register, you may not register. But if we make it a little bit more purposeful, then I think we can begin this community. Um, Great suggestion. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, was I, I reading. love that idea, Jackie. Just, yeah. I, I'm so sorry, just to add. Hello. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was reading the chat. I was just going to say right. and you should now become a member of just the fact that we're all supportive. Now, if you focus in this jurisdiction and that whatever jurisdiction you mainly focus on is a network that you should be part of, um, because sometimes I, I've noticed, uh, you know, just frequently asked questions from both those that are members and those that are not is, well, which one should I choose? And it's I always, you know, and please correct me if I'm wrong, state. I always tend to say it's the you should choose the network that is closest to the area that you heavily work in. Right, because you know the state of Maryland, we're all close to one another. But it's feel you, you should feel comfortable with choosing the my sister network that you do a lot of business in. That way, you can you know that'd be another great way of how you become you know the the local sort of specialist in that area, what have you. But just as long as we're all under that sort of mindset, if it's okay. Yeah. Well, I'm actually Martha yeah that makes sense but what we've noticed in the last year or two is that uh, persons are choosing networks that are delivering the most content and the most value so even if they have to go the extra mile we have noticed that persons in one jurisdiction is going into another jurisdiction because they prefer that content so it's back to we want to that's part of the value that we you know, we are delivering to base members and potential members is content information. Persons are bored, they're gonna go elsewhere. I mean, yeah, it would be easier it, and they ought to, um, you know, join their neighboring um, or area of work networks, but, It's know. still their choice. I mean, I think the it's point is it's, it's their choice. It's a personal choice. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, we hear you, what you're saying. Um, but it does get down to the realtor uh, and their choice of where they want to join. And you know, um, although my idea was initially just meant for us to be able to connect, but I think it also helped with us getting the sponsors because if they can come on and see 50 faces versus coming to a network with 10 people, it also will probably be able to help them to buy in a little better. Value. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, Jackie. I mean, it props you up for more success if they can see that you're collaborating with the other sister networks. I like that idea. So Lisa and uh, Jackie, from the uh, national conference that um, we attended, <sighs> this is Aurelis, uh from November 2nd, 6th, the Health, Wealth, and Self 
uh, conference, one of the things that was encouraged uh, was that we should uh, do candorly from a state level and local network, because even though we can promote our events from our Facebook or social media platforms, as well as WCR website, if we utilize candorly all the local networks along with state, we're able to see each other's events and meetings and so forth. And if, you know, and if I want to go to Howard's event, you know, I can, but that would be one way to, um, to do that. Well, yeah, no, thank you, uh, Relis. Absolutely, you guys as presidents can share your calendars with the other presidents, um, but that's also another point that I made in our president's meeting is that one of the reasons we have microsites is so we can all be unified. And so those calendars, if they are on those microsites, uh, you could, for instance, look up at, you know, Prince George's or Hartford or Howard, you know, wherever, and see their calendar um, if that's being done. So that's really critical for our presidents to be able to delegate that uh, responsibility to someone on their team to make sure that microsite is updated. And I think that's why National, <clears throat> excuse me, is making it, um, you know, uh, a mandatory class to take that uh, admin back office for those microsites because they're really trying to focus on getting us to be more collaborative and working together. And I think that's the goal. Um, I just wanted to answer a couple questions and then I'll, I'll take another person to speak. Um, Nicole from Frederick asked me about a copy of the fact sheet that I showed when Jackie was speaking. Absolutely, I'll send that to you. It is on the website, but um, I can send it as well. Um, and then also Tina Hyatt from Howard said, do we have a roster network governing board members? I do, I've been putting it together over the last several weeks and I will send that out to you all, um, to um, each person. That way you have, uh, I have it in an Excel spreadsheet of the name, position and email addresses. Does that answer your question, Tina? Yes, um, does. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll send that out as well. Did someone else want to share something? Yeah, Lisa, I had wanted to share that no one from our network was on our leadership was able to get on the micro um, set training. And I did send an email to um, Pamela because if this was a national training, and they only had a hundred spots. Uh, when our ladies registered, they couldn't get in. Yeah, I know. I heard that yeah, from several too. other, I'm... yeah, several other counties as well. So um, I have reached out to get us an answer on that. I do know that there is a makeup class, but you know, if you can't get into that one, it doesn't help us either. So I'm definitely addressing that, and I will um, let you guys know what I find out. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, anybody else want to uh, share? We were, I was asking the question, um, if you have something that you would like to see state do this year for your local network. Anyone else? Hi, this is Drew. Drew. Uh, so, uh, and I do apologize, guys, I'm uh, driving. So, um, do we have meetings scheduled, like, maybe once a quarter, once a month, where um, each position at state would partner with um, the network? So, say, like, the secretary, what, once a quarter or once every two months, have, like, maybe a meeting? just to kind of touch bases because we're all limited in resources. Right. Um, but I know that's something that I would have enjoyed, even though I was with Vera, who was crazy amazing. But uh, have we thought about that? Are we doing that? You were just discussing that, Theodore, um, Lisa. That's a great idea. What, what yeah. you mentioned, yeah, we were talking about that uh, 48 hours ago about having that ongoing um, for the role of, you know, specific training where you're touching base with president-elect, secretaries, program directors, and an ongoing 
because um, there's some folks that are not that familiar with their role and their learning curves ahead and involved. So it that makes a lot of sense. And that's what I hear Drew saying. Great yeah, idea. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Drew, um, to be specific, do you think um, quarterly would be enough? I mean, I think probably with our busy lives, that would be enough each quarter to touch um, touch base, or do you think we should have it every other month? I see Arella saying yes. Quarterly? Yes. Okay, okay, so what I can do is I'll uh, talk to the board and we can set that up um, to get an ongoing position training quarterly um, to help you guys with your positions. Absolutely, that's perfect. Thank you, Drew. Okay, anybody else? What do you wanna see from state this year? Lisa, okay. I mean, certainly from, from my point of view in, uh, in Frederick, you know, anytime that I've needed something, you've been there, you or Jackie, you, you know, have been able to respond and, and give it to me. So for now, I don't know what I need. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, kind of what I, what I have been needing, you've been giving me. So, you know, it, it's just good to know that I can reach out if, if need be. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate that. Yeah. And please know, um, uh, myself and Jackie being the state liaison this year, um, when you email us, copy both of us. Um, you know, like I said, I know we're all busy. So if Jackie's busy, I can answer and vice versa. So yeah, please, if you are reaching out um, to all of you, uh, copy Jackie on the emails that you send to state. Um, and then we can discuss it at the executive board level. Okay, so if no one else wants to speak, I'm going to give us five minutes uh, break again, and we'll start back at 12.01. Um, and we are going to have our immediate past president, Sandra Hopkins. I see Sandra came on. Hi, Sandra. Um, she is going to discuss with us how to create a budget. And, you know, sometimes it's the basics that really helps us. So she's going to do that when we come back. And just one more thing, I just wanted to say that um, when you do invite people to your meetings, if Jackie comes or I come or if Vera, anybody that comes to your local meetings, please, please, please make sure you recognize those leaders before you start your meeting. That's been a pet peeve of mine and some of the other leaders that if we come to a member uh, event or meeting, we would like to help you guys um, and we do that better when people know who we are. So if you can please remember that, that when we do come uh, to just give, um, you know, give that leader um, some respect and support when they show up. So let's do this, uh, mute yourselves. You can take yourselves off a of video and we will be back in five minutes. I'll see you then.
Okay, welcome back. Is everyone back? If you can un, um, start your video again, and I'm going to let Sandra take over. Hi, Sandra. Hey, good morning. Morning, everyone. So I am. Good morning, Sandra. Sorry. Good morning. <laughs> Has it been a good morning so far? Good. So I am, um, Lisa's asked me to teach the basics of um, building a budget for your network. And most of the stuff I'm going to share, again, can be found on the WCR.org uh, website under network tools. So become familiar with that, uh, with the site and with those network tools. There's so much information in there that will be useful for you guys, um, you know, to, to use for your networks. But um, in there is, I'm going to share my screen, hopefully. Let's see. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, good. So uh, this sample budget here is off of the WCR website. It's very basic. Um, so when you're thinking about building a budget, the biggest thing that you need to be is realistic. Like you can't put pie in the sky numbers out there. They have to be realistic with where you are with your specific networks and everyone's is gonna be a little bit different. Um, so this is just their basic. Where's your revenue coming from? Where's your income coming from? So your income is coming from several different sources. It's going to be your membership. And actually, I have, um, I, I actually downloaded Harford's, um, which is the network that I'm involved in, just so that I could show you, uh, since this is so basic and so simplistic, um, something that's a little bit more usable, I think. So this is our budget from last year. Um, and we, we keep a running total. So every column you'll see like 2019, 18, 17, 16. So we kind of have an idea of how things have changed over the years. But if you look, your income is going to come from, uh, of course, whatever you have in your account at the time that you start your term. And then your membership is going to be um, how many members, how many projected members. And again, be realistic. If you have 25 members in your network right now, you don't want to put in 50 if you don't have a way of doubling that membership. So, you know, you might want to add in one or two percent increase, uh, especially how, you know, with how difficult things have been this year. And we don't know what next year is going to look like as far as gaining new members. Just try to keep a realistic number. So you would take the number of members times whatever your dues are. And again, every network is different. Some of them are ten dollars. Some are fifteen. So when you get when you're paying your dues, you know that a portion of it goes to national, a portion goes to the state, and then a portion goes back to your each individual network. So what is that dollar amount of yours? So ours is $24. So 30 members times $24 would give us an income of $720. Um, strategic partners. Um, I know that we all have strategic partners in our network. Uh, what does that look like for you guys? And if you, I don't know if you all have um, a strategic partner brochure or guide that you give to all of your network your uh, strategic partners or potential strategic partners, telling them who you are, what benefits they could gain for being a member of your network, and then giving them a list, a breakdown of what they would get at, what, at each dollar amount. Again, this is gonna look different for each individual network and California's is gonna look different from the East Coast and the state's gonna look different from the locals. So you figure out what those dollar amounts are and try to come up with an idea of how many strategic partners you have or you're going to gain this year. 
and then whatever their level is. And then the next thing is your ways and means, which is your fundraising. So what kind of fundraising do you do or have you done in the past? You should all have a little bit of a history of how much you think you're going to bring in based on whatever fundraising events that you do. We do a basket bingo every year. It's been pretty popular for us. We usually bring in about $6,000 from that basket bingo. So we put that in there. If you do multiple, um, you know, just figure out what that's going to look like for your individual networks. This year, unfortunately, we didn't have any kind of fundraising, so we didn't really bring any money in this year. And then your mo monthly affiliate sponsors. So we have national affiliates, um, as most of you do as well. And when we give them an opportunity to speak before the membership, they pay $100 um, to, to, to be in front of the members. Um, we don't, I, I don't think we really do that anymore. This was before we actually got into the strategic partner um, platform where they have so many opportunities to speak before the memberships. But if you, you know, if you have something like that, if you pay, if you uh, collect money as a monthly, uh, um, a monthly meeting fee, uh, we hold all of our um, meetings at our association. We don't go out to restaurants and do things like that. So our meeting fee is $5 for every meeting. So we take into consideration, now even though we have 25 members, not all of them come to every meeting. So again, you wanna be realistic with this number. How, what is your average attendance at your meetings times the $5 meeting fee times however many meetings a year you're gonna have and you can come up with that number. So then you come up with your um, total income for the year. And that's, again, pretty basic, but you want to be uh, realistic. And then, you know, in order to have a budget, you have to have a balanced budget, right? So whatever, you can't have more going out than you've got coming in. So then you want to sit down and think about your expenses. Again, the one that um, is on the site for WCR is a little bit, um, it doesn't have as much detail in it. That's why I wanted to show you ours because it's got a little bit more detail, uh, a little bit more realistic, I should say. So do you spend money on certificates and folders? Um, partner appreciation. So we do a partner appreciation every year where we thank all of our partners, uh, strategic partners and national affiliates for being a part of, the, of our organization. Um, we usually give them like a gift card or flowers or something like that. Uh, and then if you're not holding lunches, at, you don't have to worry about it, but luncheon meetings and paper products for the lunches. Um, if you are doing a uh, realtor affiliate and uh, businesswoman of the year. If you do those in your network, then you need to make sure that you allocate money for that as well. Any year end gifts for your past presidents or your leadership. Discretionary is um, just awards or giveaways if you wanna have something like that throughout the year. And then your education, how much are you gonna spend on education? Uh, this year, we've been really lucky because of the virtual world. We really haven't had to pay anything for our speakers, but there are some years that we spent a lot, a lot of money on speakers. So uh, you just need to be mindful, you know, as you're doing your business planning for the year, who are your speakers going to be? What are those fees going to look like? Um, any bank fees and supplies if you have to order checks or something like that. Uh, if you have we don't really have website fees because we do have the microsites um, that WCR has given us, but we still have a domain name um, that we started using a long time ago and we, we continue to use that. So that's $15 a year for us. Any membership pins and badges for your new leaders? Um, newsletters, we don't do anymore. Then your ways and means. How much do you spend in order to make that $6,000 in income that year? We figured about $3,000 for all the baskets and the stuffings and um, you know the wrapping and everything that's involved, purchasing the tickets, um, the bingo cards, paying the bingo caller, 
those kind of things. And then your chapter operating expenses, which would be supplies, postage, um, paper, ink. Um, we usually get uh, one of our brokers, uh, we have a couple of brokers in our organization and they donate the paper and ink. We don't have to pay for that. So if you have a broker in your network, ask them if they'll sponsor you for that. Um, that's a lot of money that you can save there. Uh, region six, okay, so we don't have uh, regional meetings probably anymore now that they've um, narrowed it down to three regions and they're so big, they're saying they're probably not gonna have regional meetings. Um, so you probably don't need that in there. And then state assessments, I, I, we didn't have that last year, did we, Lisa? No. Yeah, and I don't know, I, I doubt that we'll have it this year either, but there for a few years, we did have state assessments that we were paying. So if you know that that's gonna be something, you wanna make sure you have that in there. Anything that, you're, that you know of that your organization is going to be spending money on, you wanna make sure that it's in here. Travel expenses, and we'll go through that down here at the bottom. Um, some of the networks just put in president travel, vice president, you know, president elect travel, um, and then membership director or whoever is gonna be traveling. We break it down for each, um, each function that they're gonna be going to, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then a strategic planning retreat, if you're gonna, we, sometimes we will go away overnight, we'll go away for a day. Um, this year we just did it virtual, so there was no, really no expense. Um, membership drive and retention. Do you do any kind of, uh, so for, for Hartford, we say if any of our um, current members renew before the end of December, they'll be entered into a drawing for a gift card for dinner. Um, anybody who, uh, any member that brings in a new member by the end of February, then we uh, do a drawing for a gift basket. So do you have some kind of incentive for your members to bring in new members. That's, that's what that's for. Uh, your state installation. Uh, again, we, uh, you know, as the state, we um, paid on your behalf for that this year, but typically it's about $35 a member. Are you going to pay for your leadership to go um, as a network or are you gonna have them pay individually? That's up to you. And then in any scholarships, um, uh, for, or um, other organizations. So we, we give, we uh, support, we sponsor um, a couple of different things in Hartford County. And then in turn, those organiza organizations sponsor us as well. So it's kind of money that we give out, but money that we get back as well. Um, and then the trade show, are you, do you, hold a table at your uh, tr at your association's trade show. If you do, um, is it free um, or do you have to pay for it? Do you have to pay for supplies to decorate the table? Those kind of things. And then insurance. So all of the networks, um, if you're having events, you should have insurance. I'm sure, sure Lisa's either has gone or will go over that. Um, any networking events that you do. So we, we do a couple of different um, just networking events throughout the year and try to figure out what that cost is gonna be. Most of the stuff that we do as leaders, we kind of um, supply that and we don't really take it out of the budget. So again, you know, you have to figure out what works for your network, what kind of money you have coming in and then what kind of money you're gonna have going out. But this should give you kind of a good idea um, and I can email this to Lisa and she can get it out to everyone if they want it, if you don't have a budget already. And down here is where the travel is. Like I said, some of the organizations just do president travel or vice or president elect travel. We actually break it down for mid-year what that cost is gonna look like. And then for NAR, uh, again, regional, we probably will not have again in the future um, and then I know Maryland Realtors is also going to be this year, but I don't know what those costs are going to be. So in order to come up with these costs, you know, 
inflation, um, you know, even though an airline ticket for NAR may have been $300 last year, it may be $450 this year, or maybe it's going to be less because they're trying to get people to fly again after the pandemic. I don't know what that's going to look like. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually look up flights from here to San Diego because that's where NAR is going to be held next year, just to try to get an idea of a realistic number for that flight. And then depending on how many people are going to be, you're going to, your network's going to pay for. Uh, we only pay for the president elect and the president and then our VP of membership to travel. Um, and then if anybody else wants to go, then that is, you know, those expenses are on them. Again, it depends on what, how much money your network brings in and how much you can afford to put out for your leadership. And then you always want to make sure that you've got for your president elect, you want to make sure you've got network 360 in there as well. And the travel includes, you know, your room, your, your hotel, your, your airfare. Um, we don't, we don't cover meals um, just because, you know, we, we're not a big network. We don't really have a lot of money and we feel like, um, it's just a big expense for us to even pay for the airfare and the registration and, and the hotel. So again, whatever works for your organization, but this is pretty much how our budget works. And then this bottom line number here, which is the expense travel will go up here underneath travel expenses. So again, if you don't break it down like that and you just want to put a dollar amount in here, it's whatever works for whatever works for you. But you want to make sure that your expenses down here equals your income because it needs to be a balanced budget. So if you've got too much in expenses down here and you are overspending, you need to either figure out how you're going to bring in more income or how you're going to decrease your expenses. And you want to wind up, this is zero here, you want to wind up with a balanced budget. So your income equals your expenses. Sandra, can I just make a comment? Yeah. So I was just going to say on your point about the travel with the president and president elect, for instance, in Harford County, you guys send the president and president elect um, minimum, they should hopefully be able to be sending their president. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to make a point on that, that those expenses, uh, like you said, in Harford, you don't pay for, you don't reimburse for food but all that should be detailed in their standing rules. That's all I was gonna say. Yeah, I was actually gonna to touch on that too. So whatever, you know, every network's standing rules are different too. So you need to make sure that you understand what your standing rules are and what your organization is going to pay as far as your leaders are concerned. Um, the other thing is uh, that I wanted to touch on as far as the budget is concerned is your expenses, right? So um, we at Harford um, only have one debit credit card that the treasurer holds. So if anybody needs anything, they would call the, tr the president first to make sure that you know, it was okay. And they would in turn check the budget to make sure that the money is already built into that, whatever that expense is going to be. And then that we always have the president contact the treasurer then to let them know that it's okay to pay that. Um, you don't want everybody out there running around with credit cards, spending money, and nobody's paying attention to the budget. If you need to buy something that's not allocated in this budget, then there needs to be a vote. Um, you need to go before the board and say, look, we need to purchase such and such. It's not in the budget um, and then get a vote on it. So you don't want to just be out there spending money and not knowing what's in the budget. Always go through the leadership, go through the president, go through the treasurer um, to make sure. And the treasurer is responsible for making sure that they are balancing that budget every month when the statement comes in so that they know exactly how much money is there, uh, what's been spent in what category. So if you know that you've already spent $1,500 on luncheon, luncheon meeting and paper products and you need to run out there and get more, um, if you don't know what that number is that you've already spent, 
it's kind of hard to determine whether or not you should go out there and, and do it. So the budget's very important. You need to know what it is and you need to stick to it. And then again, if there's something that you um, that isn't in the budget, make sure that you get a vote on it. And then make sure you're tracking all of those expenses as well. And I shared this with all the treasurers yesterday or whatever day it was that I was teaching, but we do have um, an expense reimbursement. We use this at the state level. We use it for our network. I don't know if all the networks have a reporting system like this, but this reimbursement form um, has all the details. So you wanna have the receipt of whatever you bought, purchased, um, who purchased it, their name, address, phone number, all that information, the date, what expense category it was from and what it was for, the amount, and then the receipt. You need to make sure that the receipts are attached. It needs to be signed off by the person who's requesting the funds. It also needs to be signed by the president. And this is just us to keep track of who's spending money and there's accountability there. And then once it gets to the treasurer, then uh, the treasurer would allocate what check number was written, or if it was a credit card, we just put CC in there, the date that it was paid and what expense category. That expense category should match your budget. So if it was president's travel for NAR conference, then she would put that in there. This is really important to have all of this documentation with the receipts when it's time for your audit at the end of the year. And then the treasurer signs off on it as well. So you've got, uh, you know, re recording, you've got, um, you know, people, you've got several people involved in it so that it's not just one person making the making the expense, signing off on the expense and approving the expense. You've got accountability there. And then depending on, um, so for us, we use QuickBooks to do all of our documenting. If you, um, if you're using QuickBooks, then you know you can keep track of all your expenses that way, or you can just do it on an Excel spreadsheet if you are a small network and don't really have a lot of funds. There's also, I wanted to show you this, there's another document in WCR. Um, here you go, planning your budget. This is also under the network tools, but it will give you, if you just wanna do an Excel spreadsheet, you can do it like this. And then it gives you some ideas of allocations for if you're a large network or if you're a smaller network, you know, just a one line item. So there's several different ways that you can go about putting together a budget. De just depends on how detailed you want to be, um, how big your network or small your network is. And, um, you know, if you're fluent in Excel or if you know how to use QuickBooks, if you're probably a really small network, maybe you don't need QuickBooks because you don't have a lot of transactions. Um, I don't, I think that's about all I had unless I'm sure there's probably some questions and I'm happy to share anything that um, you would like me to as well. Sandra, could you speak to them about the scams that are going on? Now, not oh. all of them are treasurers, but they could get a message presumably from their treasurer. So I'll let you speak a little bit about that. Yeah, I did talk a little bit about that in the treasurer when I met with the treasurers, but there are a couple of scams going around right now and they'll come via text or email and it looks very professional. Um, and it's, you'll get an email that'll say, hey, and it'll show, it'll say that you're the president. So this would look like it was coming from me, Sandra Hopkins to the treasurer, Vera, and saying, Vera, I need you to wire transfer me $500 right now. Um, or it'll say, you know, I need you to go to the store and purchase five gift cards at $50 a piece right away. Um, I always say, if you get any kind of email where someone is asking you for money to call that person, not text them, but call them and say, I just got a text or an email from you. Did you, are you asking me to wire transfer you money? What, you know, why, what do you need it for? 
um, and make sure that it's legitimate before you do it. Uh, there have been a couple of networks that I know of that were very close to either purchasing those um, gift cards or transferring, wire transferring money, and it was caught just in time before they did it. So it looks real, it looks professional, it looks like it really is coming from the presidents, but it's not. So anytime somebody's asking you for money in the network, in your networks, first of all, you need to make sure it's in the budget before they do it. Um, but you need to make sure that it is a legitimate request. And I, I always call somebody personally and say, hey, are you really requesting this? Sandra, uh, this is Drew. I thought that, uh, and maybe it's bylaws with different boards, but I thought that you had to present any request for money before the complete board. And that has to either be in person or via, via um, a Zoom call now. So even though we've all received that crazy request um, and they have access to our, our calendars and stuff like that, you should not be uh, conducting any type of uh, financial transactions or money without the whole board, correct? Yes, I would, I would say so. We, we don't at the state level or at our network, but again, you know, whatever your standing rules are, every network is different. So, I mean, checks and balances, I was telling the treasurers the other day, this is not our money. This is our members money. And we need to be, um, you know, diligent to you know, do what do what's right, um, and not be out there spending money. Nobody should be spending money without the board knowing about it. Actually, the board, you know, the leaders are the only ones that it should be spending the money anyway, and it should be for these items only. And usually, those things are discussed at our board meetings. But if the, you know, if our um, if our person who does the lunches needs money for paper towels or whatever, she'll contact uh, one of the members from the board and say, hey, I need this and we, we do authorize it. So yes, nobody should be spending money without the board knowing about it. And really the, um, the reimbursement form is just for a paper trail at that point. It's for your audit. So at the end of your term, like right now, uh, all the networks should be getting ready to do their audits for 2020 because we've got the new, you know, the new board coming in. So in order for the audit to take place and be successful, you've got to have the documentation because they're going to be looking at your bank statements, uh, your QuickBook report, all your expenses, make sure everything's been signed off, documented, and you've got receipts for everything. Sandy, this is Sheila. I have a question. Mm -hmm. We have to, um, the um, president-elect and the treasurer. We've talked about our audit, but the question is, who do we get to do that audit? So there's a bunch of different ways that you can do the audit. Um, we used to have a, a really good friend of ours who would do our audits for us, but she um, has since moved and taken a full-time job, so she's not going to be able to do them anymore for us. You can hire an outside person to do an audit, but it costs money, and most of the networks don't really have that, um, you know, in their budgets. So what we usually do at our network is our pres. It's usually the president, the um, president-elect, the treasurer, and usually a a biased third party person. Okay. So we'll have several people come in and look over the documents together. It's really important to have that by, you know, that other per third party person who hasn't been involved in the transactions. Right. Um, you know, for accountability purposes. Okay. So That's it can be, it can be someone within the uh, governing body. Yeah, well, we, and again, if that's in your standing rules, then yes. We usually have one of our lenders who's a national affiliate with our organization. Right. She will attend our audits. Okay, that's, I was thinking of asking one, um, you know, but I hadn't, we haven't done it yet. Yeah. Uh, but we do have it. Okay, I don't great. Think any of them have done it yet, but yeah. I mean, definitely the president and the treasurer need to be there. It's probably a good idea for the president elect to be there, but that third party person, you know, and a lender is always a good one or an accountant, you know, somebody right. with 
some financial background. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Lisa, can you think of anything that I didn't cover? No, I think that was, um, that was great, actually. I think you touched on everything. Great. Um, so Sandra, if, if you want to wrap up, that's fine. And then I'm gonna give the ladies a ha um, 25 minutes actually for lunch before we go into our one o'clock session. All so right. You're finished. Sounds good. If nobody else has any questions, that's all I have to share. And again, if you need the information, you know, feel free to let Lisa know and I can give it to her and she can send it out. Yeah, if you'll just send me a copy of your, um, you know, okay. your sample budget from Harford and then the other pieces, I'll send it to all the presidents. All right, sounds good. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Sandra. You're welcome. Okay, so um, go ahead and mute yourself, stop your video, and we will come back here at one o'clock uh, for our next session. I'll see you guys then. Hi, hello everyone, we're back. Um, <clears throat> wait just a minute for everyone to come back. Oh. Okay. So if you can all turn your videos on and mute yourselves, we will get ready to go. Um, I, this is our last session for today. I have the distinct pleasure to um, introduce our next speaker. Uh, she is a realtor from Greater Fresno, California. Uh, she is a member of Women's Council of Realtors. She is the 2020 event director. She was the 2021 president-elect. Um, I'm sorry, is, <laughs> sorry. Uh, 2020 Women's Council California and Social Media Chair, Strategic Partner Co-Chair. And <clears throat> she is also the 2019 and 2020 realist of Fresno County Second Vice President. Please help me welcome Aisha. Alan. Are you there, Aisha? Oh, I see her. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, awesome. It looks like maybe you have two, you've logged in twice, maybe. You're frozen. I'll give her just a minute. Aisha, you're frozen. Am I frozen? Can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome, okay. So let's get the screen share ready. All right, it's getting loaded. <laughs> okay, welcome. I hope, did you hear my introduction for you or were you frozen? introduction. Thank you for that. I greatly appreciate it. I'm really excited to join you guys today to just talk about Oh dear, you're frozen hey. again. Okay, well, let's see. I hope this is Gotta love technology. I know, it's okay. We are patient. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Can you still see the screen? Yes. Okay, so let me see if I can try doing it this way and making it work another way. So awesome. Okay, let's get the presentation started. I'm super excited to join you guys today to talk about this important topic. And I know I can see it's like having issues trying to go in and out and connecting. Connecting the screen. Thank you. So yeah, we much lost your screen, Aisha. Aisha. Can you share your screen again? Oh dear. We we lost your screen and now I can't hear you. <laughs> She's on mute. I think she's going to try and log back in. She was. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes. And you can hear me. Yes. Awesome. It's going. Awesome. Let's try this again. Now we're getting a um, echo for some reason. Okay. Go ahead. You know, we had to have at least one te technical difficulty today. <laughs> it started with the I'm going to talk about strategic partners and how the importance of our strategic partners and how we can bring value to them. Um, starting again with myself, you, you got. Oh, no. About myself. Um, so let's get that. in the industry, joining Women's Council, being a member, and then participating on chair project teams, and, and then becoming a part of the leadership team. Those are all things that Aisha, we are not hearing you. I'm so sorry. Uh. If I can offer a suggestion, we all may need to um, stop our video so that she'll be able to do this. Sometimes that helps. And see me fine or hear me fine? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, great. So I, I am a realtor with Brown. Mm. Lisa, someone made a suggestion. I didn't hear that. What, what were they were suggesting? I, I made a suggestion that we all stop our videos. Um, and that helps in this type of situation sometimes. If she's the only one that's um, showing a video, the rest of us should stop video. Stop the video? Yes. Otherwise, it just could be her Wi-Fi connection. I don't know. Aisha, we're trying to help. I'm not sure if you can hear us, but we cannot hear you. I can see your first slide with your name and who you are, but that's it. <clears throat> I apologize, guys. We will get there. Mm. Can she stop sharing and then start all over again? Just redo the process. Oh, there she, there she is. Okay, she was a member.
Lisa, would it be helpful if we were to all log off and come back in, like a refresh? That would be helpful on her end. This is yeah. Emily Clark. Yeah, mm -hmm. she may have to do that. We can't hear you. All right. I just emailed it. Oh, we're getting a um, echo. Okay. I just emailed it to you. Okay. But in the meantime, if you'd like, I can just continue on with the presentation. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so just, just a bit about myself. That was just a bit about my uh, background. Um, the next slide is going to be, which you'll see in a bit, is Kama Burton. She is our chair for Women's Council of Realtors Greater uh, California um, for our strategic partner team. And she's very and highly involved as well. Kama Burton, she is the owner and broker. She just started her brokerage with CMB Realty um, this year in September. She has a PMN designation. She is the founder of Loving Me First, a nonprofit organization. She is also a strategic partner chair, as well as 2019 and 2020 district vice president for Women's Council Realtors in California. She is also Ways and Means for 2018 Inland Valley pres past president, and her <laughs> list goes on of all of the amazing thing that she's involved in. This is all very important and I'll tie it back in just a moment. The next slide that was, was presented is who are our strategic partners? And there's a cute little photo with a heartbeat going through it. And our strategic partners are our heartbeat. They are a part of what makes us move, helps us work and do the things that we would like to do. Um, we work together hard every year during our business planning prepare how it is that we want to execute the incoming year and what how we want to go about doing that but of course part of the what helps make us move is um uh is is the funds that we obtain from these partnerships that we get with these amazing um individuals and companies that we work with so digging in a little bit more about um who our strategic partners are and what the purpose of our strategic partners are, are the what, the how, and the why. And how, so the what, uh, helping build leaders in our network. That's exactly what they do. And how is it that they do this? They do this by partnering with us to send our governing board members at, to state and national events. And of course they put on some amazing events, educational events that help us advance educate ourselves, stay um, in the know with everything that is constantly changing and also making us an amazing resource to our clientele. The why, to bring value to our networks and to help them grow in our business and grow in leadership with the tools that, that they provide. So a lot of our strategic partners that we ended up partnering with, a lot of them we partner with for specific reasons and that's why they're strategic. Um, we partner with different software companies, uh, in insurance companies, we partner with warranty, we partner with title, we partner, we partner with several different companies and, and several for several reasons and for purposes. And so they have a lot of information 
and resources that they can provide to us to help us build in our businesses. So why not take advantage of the information and the, um, and the experience and the expertise that they have in their fields to help us grow in our own businesses? What is the difference? So let's talk about the difference between strategic partners and our national affiliates, because there is a bit of a difference and there are several individuals that may not understand the clear definition, dif differentiation between the two. So starting with strategic partners, strategic partners have a, a strategic partner level. So our networks create a package and inside these packages for each level, they will get a certain item marketing, um, branding um, on several different things, whether it be your website, whether it be marketing presentations for specific events, or if it's for the year round, how you guys are gonna be advertising and marketing these partners. So you have the different levels, you had advertising depending upon the levels, which could include, for example, flyers, logos on your website. It, with strategic partners also, we grant them a lot more exposure. We're being able, we're creating this network where we share this information within our members and with our other partners as well, who also share this information with not only their uh, friends and affiliates, but they also share this information with their clientele. So that's how we grant them more exposure, giving, bringing our strategic partners more business. And in turn, that brings us a lot more um, revenue as well for ourselves with our strategic partner packages, we get to capitalize on those partnerships that we create in those partner levels. And 100% of that revenue comes to our local networks for us to use to be able to budget within um, our events and for what our planning is for that um, specific year. Um, Lisa, by chance, did you receive it or should I try resending it? Yes, can you resend it? I didn't get the attachment. And then let's talk about a little bit more on the national affiliate side. The difference with the national affiliates are national affiliates pay a membership due opposed to a strategic partner who pays for a package which outlines exactly what they're detailing, what it is that they're going to be getting with this partnership that we're creating. On the national affiliate side, they also will get a profile on our national site, just like you do as a member. You're granted a less exposure because it's not like the strategic partner packages where you have a advertising plan specific, specified for this. So then the exposure is just as it would be with a member. You get to serve, however, on a governing board with as a national affiliate. With, as a national affiliate, there are two positions that you can serve under, which is treasurer and membership director. However, you, that is a possibility for you to serve. As a strategic partner, it does not grant you the accessibility to become a, um, a leadership member. Sent it again. Let's see if that one comes through. And then also you may chair on a project team as a national affiliate. Um, and then they also, a portion, a smaller portion as a national affiliate um, of your revenue will come to you from their membership dues. So as a strategic partner, there's a lot more funds that come into the network to help us be able to build and create and be able to execute all of our goals for the year. Whereas a national affiliate, they come in as a member, they can serve on a leadership team as again, treasurer and membership director. What I think they can, and this is great information that Kama spelled out for us. And she says, a lot of folks are just like, I think they can. Well, let's give you a little bit more clarity on what they can do. What can they do? As a strategic partner, they can attend all events that we have as a member pricing. They can also co-chair a project team. They can help on project teams, help out with a lot of project teams as well. Um, they can help bring in realtors. So creating those relationships that they have built and established throughout the, the um, perfect, awesome. Yes, that they have been able to create, help out with 
they can bring in a lot more members as well because they also have a network of, of relationships with other real estate members. They can speak at events. You can have them speak at events to also grant them more exposure. And they can also sponsor events, of course. What are things that national affiliates can't, or I'm sorry, strategic partners cannot do? Strategic partners cannot serve on a governing board in any capacity. They cannot be a project team leader. They cannot vote as they are not a member and they cannot get their PMN. And there, that has been a question that many strategic partners have asked as they've also wanted to um, get more education and in becoming um, educated in, in the network as well. Um, so they've asked if they could get their PMN, but they cannot as a strategic partner. So let's go on to the next slide. One of the very, very, very important things for us to be able to do is to understand our history. Understanding our history is very essential to a lot of our strategic partners as this gives our strategic partners the importance of who we are. So if you go on to the next slide, you'll see a section from our website, our wcr.org website. And I'm just gonna read a bit of this as it's very important as it explains to us why we are here and how we got established. So let's start with a current female membership of in the National Association of Realtors. Many who are familiar with the organization may ask, why do we need Women's Council? And the answer lies in the history of the organized real estate. With NAR going back, as, back over 110 years, Women's Council over 80 years. Women's Council exists because for the first 20 years of its existence, women were barred admission from many local realtor associations. So a separate group was created. In turn, Women's Division was formed. And the annual convention in Milwaukee in November 1938 by 37 women from nine states, the council exists today because 80 years of history and legacy is much more significant than an organization of women. It is a business leadership skills. The council provides that positions the council as a leader for the industry, for organized real estate, for political action committees. And so there's so much information that you can read even more if you go into the details of the history of Women's Council as the importance of it. So we have this network of these amazing individuals, predominantly women who are so involved and are doing amazing things in the community. So as I spelled this, um, and uh, maybe we can get to the slide later, but the slide where I had myself in comma, it just listed a bunch of our involvement. That is just two people out of our California network, out of our national network that have a portfolio and a resume that is very detailed, very community driven. Um, that shows that we're not here just to sell houses. We're here because we want to be a resource. We want to inform our clients the best way possible. We want to be the best that we can be in our field. And by being involved and continuing our education, especially with this specific organization and how our network is created to continue to advance ourselves and being professionals, that is what is super pivotal. So when we start to talk, when we share that information and you start to share the members, who your members are and what they're involved in, I think that's where we start to sell it to our strategic partners that it's just not a group of women who are meeting and networking with one another. These women are very knowledgeable, very powerful. They're running their own brokerages. They're running and managing corporations and they're doing some amazing things, making and changing waves. And so as Women's Council, we've been able to pivot, especially in this current um, time frame of what we've been experiencing in this last year. We've made huge changes and even throughout the real estate community, folks are turning to Women's Council because they are the ones who are making the waves and that we haven't stopped. We've pivoted, we've made changes, but we haven't stopped. COVID didn't stop us from continuing to advance our education, continuing putting on our events, educating and furthering our knowledge, just as we are doing today. 
Um, and if we go on to the next slide, there's this awesome um, uh, piece that we have with all of some of the more, uh, the breakdown of some of the details of Women's Council, council and who we are. Ex example, networks, we recruit 3,000 members every year. That is crazy. So just talking about those pieces to our strategic partners and sharing that information with them. Network boasts 1,200 elected officers um, of the Women's Councils uh, for different programs and events. So we, we have so much that we got going on for ourselves that I don't see why I wouldn't want to partner with a network like ours to be able to help advance my business as well because you're hanging out with some amazing individuals doing some great things. And if we move on to the next slide, we have our mission. We are a network of successful realtors advancing women as business leaders in the industry and the communities that we serve. And so we have our core values and I love how Kama has rearranged the core values because there are sometimes ways that we can do things to help us to remember it. So she rearranged them in the word pilot, which is awesome for leaders, right? And so starting with P, professional credibility. That's who we are. Influence, we influence, we have major influence in our, in our industry. Leadership, we are filled with some amazing leaders doing great things. Opportunity, we seek opportunity, we find opportunities and we make opportunities. The power of collaboration, especially with our strategic partners, us collaborating, we make some great things happen when we collaborate together. And if we move on to the next slide, what do we offer? So what we can do is we can create some amazing packages that help capture our, the attention of our strategic partners and what to do to what pick out the things that are important to them. So having these conversations are great with your strategic partners, helping them become evolved to find out what is important to them and what is it that they need to be able to be able to get more exposure to to um, get, and you'll see this really cool um, math problem that helps us to understand this a little bit more, but what is it that we need to do to be able to get them what they need and to get them the more exposure to be able to help us also advance. So um, some really great examples that we have, if we click onto the next slide of some strategic partner packages are San Diego, San Diego Networks package, um, where it has, it just has a bit of everything. So it gives you a bit of the history of who you are, talks about the benefits of your sponsorship, who their network is. And then it has the breakdown of the packages, a nice little image uh, where, where you see there with uh, the whole leadership team, which is nice and it spells it out. So that's something that could be edited every year. You just change the um, details of the package itself if there's anything that you need to adjust and pivot. For example, with COVID, and I'll show you in a little bit, exactly some of the things that we had to do to change to pivot for that. And if you click on the next slide, um, you'll see the Long Beach package there. And so they spell it out and try to make it really easy for our partners to see what it is that they're getting. And you see how they um, uh, detailed it out with the check, mark bar check boxes. So you can see which getting depending upon the packages. And so if we move along, how can we best support our partners? by using them. If you move on to the next slide, there's a funny little um, image that Kama loves just to add or the gentleman is surprised. Using our strategic partners is the best way that we can do that. Use them, include them, um, and involve them in the things that you guys have going on. They can also help us bring the hype and pass on the word of what's going on with Women's Council to help bring members in, help bring help in, and also help bring other partners in by showing the value that is brought into them as well. Keep your strategic partners engaged. How do we keep our strategic partners engaged? Um, again, you can, um, project teams, orientations. So we have orientations. I'm not sure how often you guys have your orientations, but we have them quarterly. So we involved our strategic partners and I'm into them, bringing them to be involved um, now. They're Zoom. Um, so you can just have them hop on, introduce themselves, let them know what services that they provide. Um, and then they can be able to be a part of uh, the new their um, 
your call contacts. Um, for every one of the orient for uh, at each one of the orientations, they can meet each one of our new members and just be added to their database. Another thing, a great big tip, and I think this one is a very, very important one, and I know a lot of folks agree with this one, is no more drips. Um, we do share our, our, our membership contact information, so none of us really like to be dripped on. I know that a lot of our clients will unsubscribe to our newsletters, emails, and things when they feel like it's not necessarily information that they need to have specifically, or if it's too general of information, or it just doesn't feel like it's genuinely for them, like it wasn't sent specifically, it's not customized for them. So try to not to trying not to have it feel like it's just a drip system that they're being dripped on. So actually having our strategic partners engage with our members and giving them valuable content and information. Following up, we got to also follow up with our strategic partners and touch bases with them and make sure that they're in tune. On. We want to make sure that they they're aware of what we have going on in the network, what we what events that are going on, uh, what we would like to participate the vision, the brands and everything. We want our presidents check in with our strategic partners. Um, a lot of our presidents um, have created some of these relationships in advance as they are growing through the leadership steps progress and they've been around and they've had these create the conversations and relationships with them. So touching bases with them and also having our president elects do a second touch up in following up and making sure that everything is good and that, you know, they feel, they feel that we are wanting a partnership and not just wanting to pull funds from them. They're more than just that. Thank you card, sending out some amazing thank you card. Those, that's always great. I, I think that's kind of how I got into Women's Council. I got a sweet little card, a thank you card that said, thank you for helping out. I was asked to just help at the booth, like registering or checking members in. And I got a nice little thank you card and it really did make me feel special. And then later on down the line, I got another thank you card. And next thing you know, I got tapped on the shoulders and became event director for work. So sending those thank you. I know some networks events where they have meet with them, meet quarterly and do just things for their members, but they recognize them during these events and talking about some of the things that they've done to help out, um, even if it was just supporting them, sharing Sharing, sharing the content that they have on social media or whatever exposure that they're granting them or how, how well they helped you in your business. Maybe you had a transaction with them and your strategic partners were able to help you out in, in a major way. So highlighting them to show their value as well. Also having tables at events, uh, creating a special spot for them, a VIP where they have an area designated just for your strategic partners so that they know that this is just specifically for them. Uh, strategic partners of the month, just like we do everything else, employee of the month, member of the month, should you do a strategic partner of the month, highlight them and talk about the amazing things that they've done or how they've helped out. Uh, strategic partner of the year, that one's always a great one. Um, we usually do those either at, at the end of the year or during the gala or installation or at the beginning of the year as we're getting ready to revamp our new year supporting their events. We wanna do the same too, especially if they have like a new opening of an office or something great going on. You wanna be supportive of the events too so that they can feel that love and then know that you guys have actually created that relationship. So support them, be there for them. It helps out too when, it, when they turn around and want to events as well. So we can go on to the next one. What does strategic, strategic partners want? exposure. They just need to be out there more. They want to be seen more. They want to be validated. So if we go on to the next one, we have visibility plus credibility equals profitability. 
So being able to be, especially right now, I think right now is such a critical time to be visible because we are not out and about like we used to. We don't have network, um, in-person networking events like we used to. We don't get to have those one-on-one -on -one time frames when we used to go to events and then stop and talk to each other for a minute just to kind of catch up and see how things are going. We don't have those things anymore. So being able to grant them visibility at our networks or in our events right now, especially since we're virtual, that is a big thing that can go a long way. Credibility, also sharing those stories about the relationships that you've had, the transactions that you've gotten through, how things have helped, how they've worked and grinded next to you as you've caught through the transaction, especially with some of our strategic partners that are lenders. They see how, you know, we work hand in hand with each other. And so we, we can actually share those stories, those testimonials of how they, how, how, those, how it worked out for you. Um, and sharing that helps profitability because you're bringing them more exposure. You're showing them that they're, you're actually being used. And then, then in return, it's the same thing. You both profit because now their strategic partners are happy. They're going to want to invest in you again and again. We have strategic partners that invest with us annually, including my NHD. Um, they are such big supporters of us and they feel the love both ways and they share that with us consistently on how that feels that they we are constantly using them. We talk about them, we give them the exposure, we show them the love and they do the same with us. So every year we know that we're going to have that partnership and they're going to want to support us because of that. So yeah, that's always a big thing. So let's share a little bit more about that. And one of the things that we did in, in California was our um, power hour. So we went, we didn't have our virtual, we, we ended up transitioning and we started to have virtual events. So one of the things that we created was this power hour with our strategic partners where they had one hour where they can train what on whatever important information that they felt was needed based off of what their experience their expertise was, their field of expertise. So one of the ones that we did was with Bill Miller, CEO of MetroList. And so they were actually just getting ready to roll out a whole new campaign to lucky for us, it was at a perfect time because we were the first ones to get the in the know on what was going to happen, what in value that they were going to bring and about this whole campaign that they were getting ready to launch. So that's like the perfect thing that I'm talking about when I talk about those relationships and having giving me exposure. Like we had no idea that was gonna work out that way, but it was amazing that we did get that opportunity to be the first to be in the know about this and also to give them the exposure when right at the perfect time when they were wanting this. So now we have all of these realtors that are part of our network that are going to be able to learn the benefits of what they have to provide. Whereas they may not have gotten the exposure to that or information about this because um, they didn't have that relationship prior. So that was one of the awesome things that we got to do. Another one on my local network here in Fresno, what, what we ended up pivoting and doing was we turned it to these 30 minute lunch breaks. And um, a lot of folks were getting zoomed out. And so we didn't really want to get people stuck onto Zoom for a long period of time. So we figured these 30 minute bites were gonna be easier for, or palatable for you to just talk right on. You could be grabbing lunch or doing work, listening to what was going on. You can hop on either on Zoom or you can hop on on Facebook and then you can just listen to the conversation. And so we gave our strategic partners each opportunities to come on and to highlight and give information. So each one of our strategic partners talked about something and this all rolled out during the COVID time Time period. So it was perfect opportunity for folks to hop on. Another thing that we ended up doing is we partnered with them to be able to give away scholarships. So they were giving away membership scholarships of up to $100 to folks who are wanting to become a part of our members. And so what we did is during the strategic part, during the 30 minute lunch break segment, right before we hopped off, whoever was on was added to um, to a will of names and one was selected to participate to win the scholarship. So you had to be present to win. And then you had to express interest as well. So that was all amazing. And if we click onto the next slide, which is really awesome, it actually 
shows more details. And this is something that we used as, as leverage also to share with our strategic partners. So this is the stats of all of the videos and then it has also on the sides the views. So after every one of our events, we shared with our strategic partners how many views they got so they could see the exposure that they were getting and the analytics of for how, how, how you know, like how that was working out for them. So um, they don't really get to see the views and all the analytics necessarily on their side of things. So helping them and sending them updates. I sent them updates at least twice a day um, after the events so that they can see how many views that they were getting. Because at the time there was probably maybe like 15 to 20 people hopping on, but afterwards the video would either get shared or more folks would watch at their own leisure. And again, it's only 30 minute lunch, uh, 30 minute segment. So it was very palatable to do. So folks would hop on and hop off and get the information. So they absolutely loved it. If we hop on to the next slides, what are some suggestions? Some suggestions of things that you can do for events are, um, are for with your strategic partners are to suggest them to speak at events. You can partner with them and have them use their expertise to talk about something important that they can do and um, they can share a, at an event. Um, one of our um, strategic partners, she's actually an investor. She invests and, and she has a lot of experience in that area. So uh, for example, she can, we can partner with her on talking about insurance and for investment properties or also just talking about investments as well so it still gives her again more credibility and exposure to her knowledge of things so folks who probably wouldn't have known or wanted to use her for her services now know that she's an expert in that field and they can go to her for that as well um, webinars or social media we, we could do a lot more zoom calls there's conferences now that we're streamlining and going virtual you can do virtual um, information or trainings um, like such as the power hour that we did um, monthly highlights you can do highlights with your strategic partners highlighting some of the information that you do you can send out email blasts to all of your members with information that they give either a video link maybe they have some tutorials or youtube um, subscription channel that you can highlight and share that information with your partners also highlighting um, sharing their their social media streams and um, uh, handles so that you can follow them on social media as well you can do breakfast or, uh, you know, of course, right now we're not current. Well, depending on where you are, you may not be doing local events or in-person events. However, just keeping in mind some of those things for when you do decide to do some for, um, in-person events, but should you do partner with breakfast or luncheons, doing events specifically catered to them. Um, also, um, giving your member a list, sending them the contacts for your members so that they can have. Um, access to your members and creating those relationships. Also, um, a link on the website. You can link their, their images to their logos and having attaching links that dress to their um, website as well. And then also just encouraging your members to reuse them. I know sometimes I just need to remind it like, oh, that's right. I forgot Susie does that as well. I definitely can reach out to her for that. Or, you know, in times when our, our inspectors are all booked up and you need someone else to add to your, um, your contact list, that might be perfect. Just continuing reminding folks to use our strategic partners. Part strategic partner testimonials. So on this next one, um, I'm just, Elisa, if you can just double double click on the image itself. It may take like three clicks. It doesn't like it, does it? When I try, I try like clicking three times and it like consistently and then it'll start to play, but maybe not. It's okay. I can probably just send you guys the link. This here is a, a video for our strategic partners that I put together um, when we had a strategic partner training conversation well, with our strategic partners. They talked about the value and the importance of um, the relationship that we had established. And they absolutely um, appreciated um, the relationships that they had. So um, this highlighted a lot of the conversation pieces um, talk of them talking about how important it was and how, how much they have built a relationship with us, the values that they got from it, 
Um, it was some great testimonial because they talk about even um, just the way that the Women's Council works as far as educating and wanting to advance. And um, Bill Miller talks about how it, how for that was part of the reason why they even wanted to create a relationship with Women's Council was because um, it, because of the way that Women's Council was established and how it is a network for education. And so they seen that that was perfect because it was exactly the way that they wanted to model their business. So they linked up for that reason. So that's some really um, amazing pieces just to hear why these strategic partners love to partner with us and love supporting us and how it how it, important it is to them as well. And that's, I think for us, what really is important is making sure that we both feel like we're getting an advantage, getting something out of this relationship that we're both helping each other grow in our businesses and, and, and continue to grow um, educationally and professionally as well. If we move on to the next slide, we'll talk about our strategic partners a building a strong partnership as well, continuing to build that strong partnership. Um, so president-elect should be a part of the team. You, um, you wanna invite your strategic, uh, strategic partner to project team. Um, retain strategic partners. This will help you to retain your strategic partners. You want to create those relationships so that, it, that you're both getting something from this so that you can continue to be a part of this um, symbiotic relationship. Recruiting strategic partners, you wanna make sure that your strategic partners also are helping you guys out by helping you find some other amazing partnerships that can help grow. Um, you wanna maintain, you wanna focus on maintaining your partnership by following up those things that we talked about before. Following up, having orientations, have them join the orientation so that they can meet the new faces that come into the organization or your networks. Um, also feedback, providing feedback to them as well on maybe what may work or what may have worked for someone else or just information that is important to you so that they can see how they can provide that as well for you. Continue building the relationship by finding ways um, to partner with one another or other ways that are more creative to be able to grant one another um, more exposure as well. Point of contact for strategic partners. You want to make sure that you have a one, uh, for example, a liaison, someone who is going to be that middle person to make sure that they're touching bases with your strategic partners on whether it's different events, keeping them on the, in the know with what's going on. Um, we invite our strategic partners to our building business planning meetings as well, um, and to just hear about the events that we're planning and working on. They have some really great information, and, and it's so. It's, it's awesome when you guys can work together to create some really great stuff. Um, you wanna work, have them as well work together with the treasurer. And then just ensure that they have all, uh, all of the items have been fulfilled. So what we do also is we create a checklist with all of the items that we've listed on our strategic partner packages. And then we go through this list on it and we make sure that we go through it at least quarterly as well. But we want to make sure that everything that we're promising our strategic partners, we are fulfilling and making sure that we're doing some of the items on our strategic partner um, packages, maybe something that may be optional to them, like, for example, um, doing a strategic partner training. Um, and not everybody is going to take advantage of that. But you also want to make sure that you are touching bases with them. And you're following up with them to let them know that, hey, you know, we're going to be having setting timelines and dates for yourself so that you're also making sure that you can fulfill those items. Sometimes you need bios, headshots, or other information, their logos and everything that you may need to be able to market them properly. So you also wanna follow up with them to be consistent and get that information so you can do that properly as well. So you also wanna just make sure that you're consistently checking back on those items that you are promising um, within the relationship. We had to make a pivot. We had to go back and check in with our strategic partners since the world was closing and we no longer had in-person events. And we wanted to still make sure that they were feeling like they were getting the value from what, what it was that we were providing in the ever advertising that we were doing as well. So you want to check in and sometimes you want to, you may have to pivot, but you don't want to lose touch with your strategic partners and have them feel like they're no longer, you, they're in a limbo. I know that they don't feel really comfortable when, even if things are changing, for the most part, they're very understanding about that. 
However, you just want to touch patients and let them know, okay, you know, we may be making some changes. How about we try this instead? Will that work for you? Um, just so that you don't lose that relationship completely that following year. And any questions? I've seen a lot of amazing, great comments that you guys had um, listed for things that are working for you guys in your local networks. Um, I see someone posted the visibility plus credibility equals the profitability, which is great. Um, yes, the power hour, that was, that was great. That was really great. Um, and I would love to share the PowerPoint presentation, Lisa, you can definitely share that with the crew. Were there any questions that anybody had on anything? Specific? I definitely will send it to them. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Uh -huh. Lisa, did you have any questions or want to touch um, I'm just going to read through the chat real quick just to make sure. Um, one of the ladies said that they targeted their strategic partners with a special message. They sent them thank you cards also on Women's Council Stationery, which we can get at the team store. Um, and then they had a strategic partner recognition uh, end of the year for all of them and gave them okay. certificates. So that's, that's a good idea to, to highlight them. Um, yeah, does anybody else want to come back on? You can um, come turn your video on. Maybe Aisha can see you and maybe want to uh, share something that your network is doing uh, right yeah. now or has done in the past. We absolutely love to hear what you're doing. Can anybody share an, a virtual event that you guys have had recently that was successful. Okay. Go ahead, Tina. Hi, Aisha. We, um, in Howard County, we did a um, deal or no deal panel virtually um, through Zoom and uh, several of our panel speakers were our strategic partners. So it was, um, how to save the deal, how to hold the deal together, pitfalls to watch out for. So we had um, Donna Baker from Cinch, um, one of our strategic partners talked about home warranties and how they play into helping hold the deal together. We had a title company representative talk about title issues and things to pay attention to there. We had our lender partner and her, her credit repair expert talk about how to hold together the lending part of it and, and credit repair issues. And so it was a great way for us to spotlight our strategic partners um, and provide value and education to our members as well. I love that. That is a super creative way. And one, it's a play on words. I love the, the whole deal or no deal with the whole concept of real estate, right? Holding that whole deal together. Is it going to work or not? And then using your um, strategic partners, of course, they're the specialists in some of those areas of, of, of it. So that makes it, a, that makes it a lot of fun. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, And I like the interaction that you're really talking about with uh, reaching out to our strategic partners and making sure that our members are using them. I think that's a piece that sometimes gets lost, like you said, that we have to remind our members sometimes that these guys are supporting us and we do need to reciprocate in that support. Yeah, definitely. And try them out one time, you never know, maybe the greatest relationship that you've established. And I know one of our strategic partners, he's one of my, he's one of my preferred lenders and we have a great relationship. Yes, that's great. Anybody else have an event that they wanna share? Well, is there someone I can call? <laughs> All right, perfect. Well, I just want to say thank you, Aisha. I really appreciate you taking your time out today to go over this in detail with us about the strategic partner relationships and what they mean to us and how important they are to our uh, structure in Women's Council. And I really appreciate you taking your time today to, to speak to us. Most definitely. And thank you all so much for being so patient with this whole technological, uh, you know, the lovely thing. <laughs> it's all good. All good. All right. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And ladies, tomorrow um, we will be getting again at 10 a.m. Thank you again, Aisha, if everybody wants to say thank you. Yeah.
Yeah. Um, we will begin tomorrow at 10 a.m. again, and I, you will receive your agenda at 9 a.m. tomorrow for the daily schedule. Um, so until then, we will see you all. Thank you so much, Aisha. Have a good day, ladies.